Attention passengers, is there a detective on board? I must have heard that wrong. That's not the sort of thing they ask for on a flight at 35,000 feet in the air. I must be mistaken. At least I hope. Although it wouldn't surprise me. I've always stumbled face first into trouble. It's like I'm a magnet for inconvenience. Getting caught up in a flash mob just walking down the street. Or witnessing a white powder transaction while testing a new shortcut. The sheer number of murder scenes I've happened upon has made me a regular person of interest with the police. Or like today. I'm being forced to fly overseas, carrying an oversized attache case containing I have no idea whatsoever. The question just seems odd. I could understand the flight attendant asking for a doctor. Or a nurse. But a detective? Your attention, please. Is there a detective on board? Wow. So I didn't hear her wrong. But it's not my problem. Because I'm not a detective. Yes, I'm a detective. Can you tell me your name? Oh man, why'd I just blurt that out? Perfect. Hey, you. Be my sidekick for this case, will you? Yes, as I said, I'm a detective. This is my sidekick. Right this way. Hang on. What is this about? It's Siesta. Siesta? You asked me what my name was. That's kind of an odd name. It's a code name. A code name? Lots of people have them. You're the first I've met. What's your name? Kimizuka Kimihiko. I see. Then I'll call you Kimi. Do you mean like a nickname, or like you in Japanese? What do you think, Kimi? I found one, and the detective has a sidekick. <gasps> oh, so there actually was a detective on board. You're substantially younger than I would have imagined. Which one is the detective? This is one of the worst situations imaginable. First things first. Introduce yourself, please. <laughs> it's Bat. A code name, of course. See? Lots of people have code names, just as I told you. Are you kidding me? I don't care about being wrong about that kind of stuff at a time like this. My name's Siesta. This is my psychic Watson. The two of us grew up together on Baker Street. Tell me, Bat. What is it you're trying to do? Why did you call for me, a legendary detective? <laughs> this little lady's funny. Right, then. Let's see if you can deduce the reason why I commandeered this passenger jet. If you manage to deduce correctly, then I'll refrain from snapping the pilot's neck. <laughs> You didn't call us up here just to have us guess the answer to that question, did you? On the nose, detective. It's all just a game. A deadly game where the lives of 600 passengers are at stake. It's all so exciting! If you're able to correctly surmise my reasoning for this attempted hijacking, then you win. And that's that. So if we succeed, we save the lives of everyone on board, and if we fail, they die, right? Sure. We'll keep it nice and simple. Fair enough. But you must be aware, if we fail at this little test of yours, you'll crash and burn with everyone else on board. Do you not value your own life? If I wasn't doing something like this, I wouldn't feel truly alive, you get me? Wow. You have so much time in your hands. You might have a point. It's gotten so bad that I've gone and hijacked a plane now, haven't I? Right. You just gave me the answer. <clears throat> With all that time on your hands, you got so bored you hijacked a plane for fun. Oh. That's my final answer. 
Wait, isn't that a bit hasty? Are you really sure? The lives of all these innocent passengers depend on your answer. I mean... He just told us as much, didn't he? He got bored, had nothing else to do, so he thought, I'll hijack a plane. Look, I heard the same thing as you, but what if he was saying that as a distraction? Huh, that. Are you insinuating that this man could be lying? Uh. Face to face with an ace detective, he's intimidated into claiming that the answer he let slip was actually a red herring, and so he's planning to bring the entire game to an end by insisting that I lost? In other words, you're saying he's scared? Well, am I right? <laughs> oh, you're incredible! You got me! Very impressive work there. I never would have imagined you'd twist my own words into such a tangled knot. <sighs> the outcome is more abrupt than I'd anticipated. That's fine. My purpose has already been achieved, and so, I'll stand down. No need to worry. That one over there is merely unconscious. He's not dead. I expect to be arrested on arrival at the airport, but I haven't killed anybody just yet. So, after a short stay in the big house, I'll be right back out. So, he was right. You were lying. What are you trying to say? Oh, nothing. Here's the deal, Miss Detective. It's true. My real reasons for trying to hijack this plane were indeed different from the one you gave me. But out of respect for your boldness, I'm pretending to lose this time around just for you. Come on, don't make me spell it all out. That's still a win. So I suggest we take a cue from Bat's mature response here and return to our seats as well. No, you misunderstand. That's not the lie I was talking about. Earlier, you told me you didn't mind putting your own life at risk in a hijacking, Bat. But that was a lie. The truth is, you were actually afraid of dying. What are you saying? You stood down far too quickly. You admitted defeat and gave up without even fighting. Things as they are, there's no way you single-handedly hijacked a plane, then cowardly backed down when confronted by a young girl and her sidekick. I suspect you did this hijacking under some other entity's direction, and you yourself have been ordered to die along with your victims in the ensuing plane crash. The simple truth is you're afraid and don't want to die, and so you used us as a way to get out of a fate that would have otherwise been inescapable. But if that's the case, why go through the elaborate ruse of this guessing game? If he wanted to abandon the hijacking, he could have just quietly surrendered without all these unnecessary theatrics. Sadly, his pride would never allow him that. Rather than give up, he wanted to be beaten fair and square, even if it was just for show. You think that's what this was? Hang on. Where are you going all of a sudden? Now that our task is finished, I was heading back to my seat. Okay, but don't leave me behind. I assumed you'd tag along without me having to say anything. Hey. <laughs> One last thing I'd like to know. How were you able to figure everything out? What clues led to those deductions? You said you figured it all out because I gave up my attempt too quickly. But was that all? That was part of it. But to be honest, I've known about you, from the beginning. <gasps> I knew that this was the flight you were going to be on, and that you were planning to hijack this aircraft. And on top of that, I know all about your associates who ordered you to do it. <gasps> Any true detective worth their salt gets a solid handle on the ins and outs of a case before the incident even occurs. So that's how you knew to call my bluff. Oh, man. I'm glad I asked you to clarify just in case before all was said and done. <laughs> Sidekick, get down! Huh? Hey, what are you doing? Apologies. I guess I'm changing the plan. Now let me teach you something. When a first-rate operative like me 
discovers an up-and-coming talent like you, he nips it in the bud before it can fully mature. <laughs> hey, your arm. <laughs> Why did I bother hiring a sidekick? So far, he is proving to be completely useless. Are you kidding? You're the one who forced me to work for you. Although I agree I haven't been of any use. <laughs> so what's up with this guy? That here is an android. Oh. He's a member of a secret organization known as Spes. Spes? Spes produces androids with superhuman intellect and ability as part of their plan to terrorize the world. In this case, it's only an ear. It would seem they've stolen an experimental product and grafted it onto his body. So I guess that makes him a partial android. Wait, how do you know all this stuff? This mission must be the result of some penalty. Perhaps as punishment for betraying the organization he works for. Again, how do you know this stuff already? Does that mean that you're clever? You already know that much. Well, in that case, bringing back your corpse as a souvenir would seem to be the wisest course of action. <laughs> What a curious question. Do I look like a monster? Well, you kind of make a monstrous impression. Kimi, you're no ladies' man, are you? What the heck is that? Remain calm. Please evacuate this way without running. Look at that. This is pure pandemonium. I'm getting desperate. I guess I'm going to have to kill all these excess people. Wait a minute! If you kill everyone, then the plane will crash, and you'll die! <laughs> Fair point. Guess I'll leave the pilot alive. With that said, who the hell are you, kid? The Ace Detective sidekick! Oh? Uh, uh, I mean, no, that just kind of slipped out. You made sure to refer to me as an Ace Detective, like a true sidekick. <sighs> Look out! What the hell is going on? Wow, you really are clueless, aren't you? Uh, why would a middle school student know about the goings-on of some secret underworld? I'm sorry, I must have been mistaken. Weren't you traveling overseas with a mysterious briefcase? For the last time, how do you know all of this? <laughs> I've got to admit, I never imagined bumping into someone that could be a threat to us in a place like this. Operating covertly is fundamental to the life of a detective. None of your compatriots have any idea I even exist now, do they? They don't have a clue, which means I can use the information about you as leverage to get those short-tempered fools to reevaluate my value to the organization. You really think they'll forgive you that easily? <laughs> what would you know? <laughs> Punches a hole in the fuselage, we're in real trouble. <sighs> Sounds like I've got you breathing pretty hard. This ear is custom designed, and there are auditory receptor cells at the tip of the appendage. They can distinguish the sound of a specific human heartbeat from over a hundred kilometers away. Trying to hide from me is pointless. I didn't acquire all the intel. Even I can't slow down or quiet my heart rate in command like that. If only I had a weapon. Siesta. Huh? Buy me 30 seconds or so. I've got an idea. Will do. Born trouble magnet. I've stumbled upon more scenes of carnage than slices of bread I've eaten in my entire life. <laughs> Don't you think it's about? 
about time you accepted your fate, detective. I have a question about that specialized process where you manipulated the gun's bullets. I'm still a bit confused. When did you find time to do that? Dear Kimi, you're slow. Uh, There's no way I would have had time for that. Uh, Instead, I made preparations for it in advance. But how could you have? No way. Yes, if you're wondering who ordered them to have you carry that attache case into the plane, it was me. Huh? Hold on. Are you telling me that you had me in your clutches from the beginning? If you really need someone to blame, blame yourself for not seeing the strings puppeteering you. Puppet? Uh, this is absurd. All right, then. Why'd you give me... What the... Siesta? Now that it's done, what the hell was that? Never again. I won't get mixed up in that stuff from now on. Welcome home. Uh... Hey there, you sure took your time. Huh? How many times do I have to say it? I don't want to. Sorry, what'd you say? And stop pretending that you can't hear me. I'm telling you, there's no way I'm becoming your sidekick. No ifs, ands, or buts. I didn't quite catch. 
catch that. Uh... I always thought bath time was meant to be relaxing. Would it help if I washed your back for you? No, thank you. Maybe I'll come in wearing just a bath towel. No, thank you. Don't think I didn't note your hesitation just now. That's not fair. She's going straight for my weakness, the fact that I'm a boy going through puberty. I've been saying every single day, and you heard me. That's right. For an entire week, you can't just barge into somebody's house uninvited and never try to come into an occupied bathroom. The only reason I came here is because you refused to hear my proposal. Your proposal isn't worth hearing out. I'm only saying I want you to fly around the world with me and serve as the sidekick to a legendary detective. Come on. That request is insane, therefore I can only respond with a no. <sighs> no need to get so emotional. You do understand that just showing up at your house like this, it's not easy for me either. Huh? You invite yourself over, then act like it's my fault for the inconvenience? And besides, I'm pretty sure I locked the door. I took it upon myself to open it with a skeleton key. It happens to be one of my signature seven tools. I haven't found a lock that this little guy can't open yet. Great, so breaking and entering is just one of your hobbies. <clears throat> that was uncalled for. It can't be as uncalled for as invading another person's privacy. And so? Why are you so averse to the idea of becoming my sidekick? <sighs> it's just in one ear and out the other. As far back as I can remember, my knack for getting tangled up in trouble has only brought misery. So I have this dream where I lead a nice, uneventful life. You know, like the existential equivalent of bathing in lukewarm water. And you're saying that with me, you wouldn't be able to live that life? Clearly. Nine lives wouldn't begin to cover me if I got involved in the kind of work you do. You have to understand, this specific line of work, only I can do. Okay. So what's the point in bringing me along if only you can do it? The point... Oh, I know. You're gonna say something you just thought up. I was utterly taken with you at first sight. Oh, come on. The first time you arranged for us to meet, you didn't quite recognize my face, or don't you remember? It's true. Your face is completely forgettable if you haven't seen it in a while. Perfect for covert action. Stop insulting me with backhanded compliments. And for the last time, stop assigning me tasks as your sidekick. You really won't do it? Won't be my sidekick? Why are you getting disappointed all of a sudden? <sighs> Look, if we're negotiating, you could lay out the merits of the job at the very least. <laughs> I didn't expect you to fold so easily, Kimi. Don't be so sure. That reminds me. I just ordered a pizza for delivery. Hope that's all right. Will you stop taking advantage of my forgiving nature? That's the fifth time this week! Call them right now and cancel it. Allow me to make a little prediction. I think that a year from today, we'll be celebrating the anniversary of our great friendship. We are not celebrating anything. For the record, I for one have been stressed out this entire time. So since you're finished, just tell me what you think. Wait, that's not right. We were at the point where you were going to lay out the merits and benefits of taking this particular gig. Is there something you're worried about? One merit of coming to work for me as my sidekick is that I can assuage you of all those worries. You're gonna reassure me about the things that trouble me about the job? That's the compensation package? We can at least work from there. And now the next point. If you've seen a certain something, could you at least react like you've seen it? Ah. Uh, I did notice, but it doesn't hold my attention because, well, I'm thinking more about the pizza. It's weird. At my school right now, we're having a big-time Hanako-san of the toilet outbreak. <sighs> so a little toilet bond Hanako mischief? Yeah. That's just one of those ludicrous urban legends you hear about from schools all over Japan. If you knock three times at three in the morning on the third girl's stall in the restroom on the third floor of the old schoolhouse building, a girl in a red skirt with suspenders will manifest out of nothingness and drag you down the toilet never to be seen again. It's utter nonsense, a hackneyed outdated schoolyard rumor that would in most cases not be worth bringing up in this day and age.
And yet I get the feeling the situation's a little different at your school. For sure. Listen, Siesta. Hmm? Stop flipping through magazines about foreign dramas while eating pizza in the home of a guy you just met while also casually wearing said guy's loungewear. Are you like a surprise girlfriend who's living with me now? What? Of course not. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm complaining. So let's get back to this whole Hanukkah thing. Sure. But don't be so casual about it. The way you said it made it sound like you're on friendly terms. So the gist is that Hanukkah-related incidents are on the rise at your middle school, yeah? Yeah. Apparently any student who meets a Hanukkah-san winds up becoming a Hanukkah-san themselves. I get it. It's the same way with zombies. One bites you, you become a zombie too. Bah! <sighs> But in this case, it appears to be more than just a rumor at your school. Otherwise, I doubt you would have brought it up in conversation. Yeah, you've got that part right. But still, lately I've noticed an increase in students skipping. Most of them were the track and field club. And it's more than just skipping school. Some of them have even started disappearing from their homes. Now, the rumor going around your school is that this Hanako is the one behind all this, right? If the urban legend is to be believed, she must have dragged the missing students down the toilet. Bingo. And from the fact that the number of disappearances have increased so rapidly, the suspicion is that the actual number of Hanako-sans is on the rise. Mm. Hence the previously mentioned Hanako outbreak. Uh, you have a kind heart. Thanks, but you still have to pay me back for the pizza. Oh, I wasn't saying that at all. I have no intention of paying for the pizza. Oh, you're gonna... The students you say disappeared from your school, you obviously weren't friends with them. But you're still concerned about it and want to put an end to whatever is causing the issue, right? I don't appreciate you talking as if it's an obvious fact that I have no friends. I wonder if it's because you're a self-described trouble magnet. And yet at the same time, helping other people is ingrained in your nature. Another part of my DNA I could do without. But still, when it comes to the world that I interact with... I'll do whatever I can to keep things tranquil. My parents finished before I was even aware of them. After moving from place to place, various foster houses and facilities, I'm now living alone. That would make anybody seek out a tranquil, stable environment. At least that's the way I see it. It makes sense. Which means that's your... Yes, that explains everything. Uh, if you understand everything about me after one conversation, I'm terrified. You must be lonely living a life with no family or friends, right? Wait, at what point did I ever insinuate that I don't have any friends? With that topic in mind, I think we should go to this over the weekend. A culture festival? Whatever happened to looking into the whole Hanukkah-san situation? <laughs> this a culture festival how have i not heard about this thing seriously though i've been at school but i can't remember helping with any preparations don't festivals always involve working together as a homeroom class to prepare an exhibit did they finish when i was absent or something did i miss out on this bonding experience due to being caught up in any number of fiascos and why didn't anyone think to tell me that i'd missed out sorry i'm late Siesta, that outfit you've got on, it's so... Mm. Oh yeah, it's different from what I normally wear. Look, I even put a ribbon in my hair as an accent. Like it? Mm. <laughs> Why'd you turn away all of a sudden? <sighs> I had to, because of the possibility that if I wasn't careful, I'd let slip that she looked really pretty in that uniform. But that felt like admitting defeat, so I didn't want to say it. Why are you wearing our uniform anyway? Oh, that's all quite simple, Kimi. I just thought dressing up in uniform for a culture festival date sounded like fun. <sighs> it's so blue. Yep. So, why are you staring up at the sky? Well, where should we start our walk around? Food stalls and a planetarium. 
so the haunted house is in the old building. We've got to check that out. Yeah, but we should look over the schedule before we make any decisions. Uh, hey! A question about the haunted house. Can visitors get in during off hours? Really, Siesta? It's on the front. No entry during operation staff lunch break. But according to the ideal itinerary I drew up in my brain, going in at the time would work out the best. I want to be fortified with food first, from the heaping helping challenge, naturally. Not the typical planning middle schoolers do on a festival day. And that is why, if it's off hours, we'd appreciate some help. Come along now, sidekick. I could really go for a crepe. Hey! <laughs> wait! Sorry to keep you waiting. You know, Siesta, it's not a good idea to push your absurd <sighs> demands on people that aren't me. Okay, you bought this for me without even saying anything. And yet just the other day, you got upset when I ordered that pizza. Is there something going on? It's because the situation keeps changing, hour by hour. I prefer the sweet festival experience to the elusive Hanako-san. Time for the Kimizuka Romcom Bazooka. I actually think having this little date means that you and I are together or anything like that now, do you? What? No way. You're so funny. Not thinking of that. Of course not. Not even a little. Don't be a moron, Kimi. <clears throat> now let's go get some of that takoyaki. This sudden closeness is creating all kinds of misunderstandings. Okay, third stall in the third floor restroom of the old schoolhouse. The stage is set for Hanukkah-san. And we're sitting ducks, waiting in a single toilet stall. Remind me again why we're doing this? There's something I wanted to investigate. If my suspicions are correct... There! What's your assessment of this? Now, let's see. A packet of medicine? It looks like a student might have taken it after eating in here, maybe? I can't stop myself from feeling extreme sympathy for you if that's the very first thing to pop into your mind. Tell me something, Kimi. The stable life you want wouldn't happen to involve you in a bento box all alone in the restroom, would it? No, if you'll recall, both of my parents have been missing for a while, so nobody's ever been there to prepare a bento box for me. The only lunch I've ever eaten alone in the restroom is a pastry. Okay, well now you've got me feeling really sorry for you. Would you like me to make a bento box for you every now and again? Hey, I thought I asked you not to say things that could be misconstrued. Quiet. schoolyard passing out flyers but why would you come all the way up to this restroom you won't get away what <clears throat> hey what's going on that rabbit is your school's toilet bound hanako-san you say that rabbit is our Hanako-san? I'll explain later. First, we have to track down that creepy cottontail. Uh, sorry if this is anticlimactic. But is that him? If he just acted casual, I never would have recognized him. Right! Let's snatch that floof! It's really great to see you so motivated and on board with our mission. See what can happen when you actually try? Wait, what the heck do you mean, when I try? You're attempting to start some sidekick training project. I know what you're up to. Costume club! We're offering outfit try-ons free of charge. If you have just a minute, we hope that you'll come by. If we had the time. 
This would have been my chance to see Siesta in a maid costume with cat ears. My bad luck strikes again. I need costumes for two, please. You want us to try something on? Isn't he gonna get away? This is a tactical maneuver. If our enemy is trying to use a crowd of people in costumes as a cover, the sound strategy is to use cosplay to blend in as well. Do you really think that's gonna work? Seems like a maid with cat ears would catch everyone's attention immediately. It's fine. Now go! I'm curious. What made you assume I was going to be a maid with cat ears? That's a hard no. This is... on you. Lovely. Magnificent. Uh, oh, Kimi. Well? <gasps> yeah, it's good. I mean, that dress really suits you. I never would have guessed you'd just come out and say it. Fair, but I couldn't lie about it even if I tried. True. Oh, and by the way, your tuxedo suits you, too. Oh, you think? We can take a picture uh, of you, if you'd like. Uh, well, I... I mean, we might as well. Here goes. Smile big and say <laughs> cheese. We're in hot pursuit of that sketchy rabbit! Seems we spent too much time leaning into the romantic comedy. This dress makes it much harder to run. Well, of course. Maybe she got confused and thinks this is some kind of cosplay event? Hey! Hmm? This is fun, sidekick! <laughs> Who you calling sidekick, lady? Oops, you caught me. Sidekick, look. The bunny's making a break for it. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I don't think this is a good idea. I've got to be mistaken. You aren't planning to jump from here and chase him on your own. No, of course not. I thought so. You're too smart for that. The way you phrased it implied you wouldn't also be coming down with me. Huh? It's fine. The shoes I'm wearing today are another one of the signature seven tools of the legendary detective's trade. But... Uh... It means that we can fly. <laughs> this is the drug the students who stopped coming to your school were buying. They were using it to elevate their moods as well as improve their concentration. So it was starting to become popular, mostly with the students in the track and field club. Yet I never had the faintest idea. Cases of memory impairment have also been reported to occur as a known side effect of the drug. And according to what you're telling me, that's why the students who used it are now skipping school regularly. The addicted students turn to selling it, to earn enough money to pay for their own, and the cycle repeats itself again. I believe this to be the root cause of the rapid proliferation of Hanukos of late. And as slang, the black market used the Hanukosan urban legend, something most Japanese teens would be familiar with. In fact, the main ingredient in this illicit drug is apparently a pollen-like substance that comes from a specific flowering plant. Pollen? That's where Hanako, meaning flower girl, comes in. That's some pretty lame wordplay. But according to the legend, isn't the ghost spirit only supposed to appear at 3 a.m.? Why would they risk showing up at the culture festival? So they could blend in with the crowd. And what's more, they could easily disguise their identity with the costume, allowing them to get the jump on rivals and spread the drug around untouched. That makes sense. And something must have tipped you off from the start, because you could tell right away that rabbit was up to something, right, Siesta? That's because you told me most of the Hanukos were from the track and field club. What kind of weirdo wears running shoes with a full rabbit costume? It was a dead giveaway. A clearly suspicious bunny. 
Thinking back on it. Siesta posed as a customer, expertly utilized their slang, and covertly established contact with the Hanako-san cartel. Remember, a genuine first-rate detective, one who's worth their salt, gets a handle on the case before the incident occurs. To a detective of your caliber, this wasn't a particularly challenging case. However, recent word from the rumor mill says that Spess also had a hand in this whole flower pollen drug debacle. That's the secret organization you mentioned, right? From hijacking planes to using school's urban legends as cover for criminal activity, what do you think they're trying to accomplish? It's rather simple. Spes means hope in Latin. Their main purpose is to offer salvation to those who seek it. Now it's starting to sound like some shady religion. So, what are you going to do moving forward? Me, the guy who said he wanted a normal life where nothing ever happens, still hadn't begun to realize. That tranquil life I was looking for didn't exist. It had already been poisoned at the source. Siesta? I'm gonna ask you this one more time. What kind of advantages would I gain by working with you as your sidekick? I need to know what benefits you're going to offer. I mean, why would anyone want me as their sidekick anyway? The reason must be that I'm a born trouble magnet, right? For Siesta, pursuing the secret organization Spes, that alone would make me a valuable resource. I doubt that she's even looking for a sidekick. But rather for the incidents that I'll attract. That's why the only incentives she could offer were half-assed things that she'd improvised on the spot. I've made my decision. No matter what Siesta may say, I'll refuse. That's the only option. I'll protect you, I promise. <sighs> Whatever kinds of troubles or incidents your unlucky nature ends up dragging you into, I give you my word. I'll put my life on the line to keep you safe. So please. Kimi, I truly hope you'll become my sidekick. <gasps> You're trying a clever new way of twisting things around? A blunt request glossing over the reality of the situation. Well, if you're willing to meet me this far, I'll go along with you. I thought as much. In coming all the way here, you'd kind of already given me your answer. Either way, when you toss out the word sidekick, I'm still not certain what you're looking for. The day would start with you waking me up, reading my toothbrush, and lending me a hand with getting dressed. I'm not interested at all. You thought about it before applying, which meant you thought it sounded good enough to not reject outright. Fine, I get it. You win, okay? I'll become your sidekick if you're gonna be so insistent. <laughs> For better or worse, as long as we both shall live! Uh, are you proposing to me? N no, not like that! This is how my dizzying tale of adventure with Siesta Ace Detective truly began. At least... Until death did us part. That's right. The detective is already dead. Are you ready? While well, you're being swarmed by the other guys, I'll take down the main enemy. Hold on a sec. Can't you pick a plan that doesn't end with my death? Don't worry. I'll take full responsibility and delete your computer search history, okay? Seriously? Wait, what'd you say? You haven't actually looked at my search history, right? <laughs> For three whole years, Siesta and I's dramatic adventure unfolded. We battled humanity's enemies, side by side. 
It's been a year since those crazy days came to an end. As a high school senior, I have now immersed myself from head to toe wholeheartedly in the lukewarm water that I call everyday life. Is it enough, you ask? It is. This life of mine impinges on no one. That's how it's been. At present, I'm being threatened by a girl I've never seen before. The reason why is a complete mystery. Answer me already! Are you actually the legendary detective, Kimihiko Kimizuka? Detective? It's been a while since I've heard that word. You must be mistaken. Excuse me. Hold on! <laughs> Give me a proper answer, or I will touch your uvula without any mercy whatsoever! Are you Kimihiko Kimizuka? What's that? I can't hear you! Ew, that's disgusting. It's unbearably rude to drool all over the fingers of a girl you've only just met. What is up with this girl's weird behavior? Am I being punished or something? Wait a second. I know what's happening. I think you just need me to give you a little hug. No, 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 no. What exactly are you trying to do here? Too bad. Because we really could have had a bit more fun with this. You don't need to throw your body around to have fun. And don't offer up your chest to some guy you don't even know. Nagisa Natsunagi. Uh, could you maybe wipe off your hand first, at least? Look, I came here because I have a request for you. I'm looking for someone. And I've heard you're a detective? Unfortunately, you've got the wrong person. Is that so? <clears throat> High school hero. A pro at finding lost pets. Direct deposit scammer gain apprehended. Surprise interview with the boy named K. Boy hero saves lives. If you still insist that you're not the legendary detective I've heard about, then just what are you? You said you're looking for someone, right? You'll be the detective for my case? I'm not really a detective. More of a... Of a what? A sidekick. But all right. What do you mean by that? Tell me, who is it you're looking for? The thing is, I'm not sure. And I need your help to figure out who it is I'm trying to find. What? You see, there's somebody I desperately need to meet. But uh, I'm not quite sure who it is, if that makes any sense. For example, I don't even have the vaguest idea about their age, gender, or where they live. So, for the time being, let's call the individual you're looking for X. What do you know about them? Any details? Every little thing matters here. Nothing. I don't even understand why I'm preoccupied with X in the first place. It's just, I have these sudden urges and I find myself wanting to meet them. When approximately did these urges first start? One year ago. Okay, what happened one year ago? I was on the verge of death when I got my life back. No, I was given it. The heartbeat I had you listen to in the classroom, it doesn't belong to me. So a heart transplant, go on. I've had a serious heart condition ever since I was little. Growing up, I was in and out of hospitals waiting for a new heart. A year ago, they finally found a suitable donor and I was able to undergo the heart transplant procedure. Ever since that day, this ex-person's existence has been fluttering through my brain. Sounds like... memory transfer. Mm hmm? The reason you can't stop thinking about this person is that X is someone the original heart's owner wants to see. Well, that's just stupid. If you believe that, then why did you even bother telling me about your heart transplant? <gasps> The phenomenon of memory transference. It's not scientifically proven or anything, but many recipients have reported feeling influenced by the organ donor somehow. 
Things like eating food they used to despise, or having memories of places that they never visited. Get it? Yeah, I get it. It's not that I actually want to meet X. It's what whoever had this heart before the transplant wanted. Most likely. If I had to venture a guess about it all, I'd say X was close to the donor. Family, a friend, maybe even a lover. I see. All right, I'm glad we solved that mystery. Case closed. No need to thank me for my services. Hey, where are you going? Since it's solved, I'm leaving. It's not you who wants to meet X, but the heart's owner. Well, the original owner. It's just an old memory, so it has nothing to do with you. You're wrong! It's more than just an old memory. There's way more to it. Their body may have died, but they passed their heart on to me, and I know there's someone they're desperate to see. Because of this heart, I was given a second chance. And I need to repay the favor. So I'm going to help them. That's why I have to find X. For your own satisfaction? Yes, for my own satisfaction. This heart belongs to me now. And I'll do all it takes to find this person. Kind of contradicts what you said before, doesn't it? Shut up! <clears throat> Are you gonna help me or not? That depends. Does it pay? Sure, and you can touch my chest for an advance payment. Classic extortion. <sighs> Sorry I'm late. <clears throat> Enough with the Aga goggles. It's super rude to stare at a girl like that, especially when you're not even dating her. That's a pretty lame comment to throw out. I mean, you're the one who attempted to smother me with your boobies. Come on, you know you enjoyed it. <laughs> Ew, you're staring way too much. No, I was just looking at other stuff, like her collarbone. That's worse. I'd much rather you look at my chest like a normal person. I'm just saying. For your age, you've got great collarbones, Natsunagi. I'm pretty sure there's no correlation between age and collarbones. Mm. Wait a minute. Haven't you and I had a back and forth like this before? The thought of a conversation this dumb happening more than once sounds like a special kind of hell. Fair. Anyway, we should get going. <laughs> Stop that guy! He's a thief! you'd be involved in this. <sighs> I've come to expect it by now. If there's a crime in this district, you're nearby. Yeah, I can't help it. Seems to be part of my nature. Whatever. Are you working alone these days? No, I'm useless by myself. Besides, when it comes to that crew, well, let's just say I'm not on their radar anymore. The cold-hearted thing's not your style, but sure. Dead people tell no tales, right? What the heck was that for? Eh, it just felt right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, sorry. This is Miss Fubi. It's Fubi Kase. Do you work for the police or something? Assistant Inspector. She happens to be the person we were meeting up with. Huh? My friend, this girl needs to talk to you. Oh, girlfriend. Not what I said. It's nice to meet you. My name is Nagisa Natsunagi. A pleasure. So, why do you need me? I just figured if anyone could help, it would be you. Classic. Though I'm not sure what you think I can do. Miss Fubi, you're different from normal police. Different? How? Your resolve. Cool story. I get what you're saying, but I'm not a doctor, kiddo. Not my expertise. But I really need your help. It's important to me. No can do. <gasps> Look, I'm a very busy woman. After this, I gotta head over to the big house and put in an appearance. The big house, huh? That's correct. If you two want to tag along, then whatever. <clears throat> it's up to you. No skin off my back. Listen, I've still got some work that I need to finish upstairs. 
You've got 20 minutes before I'm out for the day. We clear? Crystal, ma'am. Hey, Kimizuka? Might be weird to ask, but I thought Miss Fubi said we were going to some big house. This doesn't really seem all that homey. Because it's a prison. Ah, what the heck? What happened to the big house we were supposed to visit? It's slang for jail, okay? Oh, it is? Are you really that naive? Come on, let's go. See the doors all the way at the end? That's where we're headed. Who's in here? A guy. More specific? A guy who gave up being human? Very funny. Huh? Oh, it's been quite a long time. Ace Detective. I wouldn't go so far as to call myself Ace Detective. Mm hmm? I see. It's you. The sidekick. Watson, right? Your eyes. Can you see anything? Nope. I imagine my eyes probably look more dead than yours, Watson. Uh, yeah. How terrible. You have my deepest sympathies. Still, I prefer that you don't call me Watson, okay? <laughs> That's so. Did you give up the sidekick business? Listen, we're here to talk to you about something. If you've lowered yourself to come see me, then I can only assume that it's an incredibly special circumstance. Fortunately, I have a lot of free time. What's the problem? Well, you see... What's wrong? It's just that you seem a bit nervous. A touch out of character for you. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh, sorry. How rude of me. That, the girl next to me, is Nagisa Natsunagi. She's my classmate. Natsunagi? I see. Uh, yeah. My name is Natsunagi. And I... I came to see you today because I wanted to talk to you about my heart. I understand. You're asking if I happen to know anything about your heart's previous owner. Is that right? Yeah, uh, that's right. But how could you have known that? <clears throat> Not Sanagi. Let's just say that he has an interesting background. And while we're at it, he's no ordinary human. Huh? That is what I like to call a partial android. He was made by Spess. Say what? I guess that sounds crazy, huh? Of course it does. What kind of sci-fi BS is- The world is vast. And it's brimming with surprises. If I wanted, I could hear people talking even if they were 100 kilometers away. Hearing your heartbeat is a simple task for someone with my particular talents. This piece of work has traveled the whole world using that thing as a weapon. Chances are, he's heard your heart before. He's got a whole database of hearts he's heard, so I thought he could compare them to yours. I never intended to keep you in the dark. But the truth is, I know this man better than I'd like. So it would seem. <laughs> How long has it been? Four years now? That was the last time I fought you two, right? You two? My such nostalgia. Yeah, whatever. Listen, there's no way on earth I'm letting that creepy ear get anywhere close to my heart. I don't exactly blame you. <laughs> Actually, this distance will more than suffice for me to do the job you want. But what if I told you that I've already determined everything there is to know about your heart, young lady? Huh? No way. Then you... You really have met the previous owner of Natsunaki's heart before? An explanation would be tedious. So why not just show you? It can't be. <gasps> Siesta here! Simply put, you will never have the self-agency to raise an appendage against me ever again. I was just born to be an ace detective. It's what's in my blood. Impossible. You... No. 
There's just no way. Don't do this to me. It's not fair. Watson, burying your head in the sand is pathetic. <laughs> From the moment you two entered this room, I was certain it was the other girl who had come here with you. <gasps> oh, it's been quite a long time, Ace Detective. <laughs> So that's what this is about. I thought it was weird. After all, I was never the type of girl that went around hugging random guys I'd only just met or anything. That behavior was never me. It was someone else. The previous owner of this heart. That ace detective you used to work with, Siesta. She was making me do that stuff all along. Hold on. Not so lucky. It's a coincidence. Running into you at school, and the fact that Siesta's heart just happens to be there in your chest. All of it. <laughs> and that was the influence of your heart's former owner. Right, Natsunaki? It was not! That was my own intention! I wanted to hit you in your stupid face, so I did! A coincidence? You call this reunion a coincidence? What a joke! Don't brush this under the rug with that word. This is a yearning. Even after dying, this heart still searched for you. It still wants to be with you. That's its only wish. For a long time, we've both... We've both been searching for you, Kimihiko Kimizuka. So shut up! Don't you dare write this off as a silly coincidence! Don't make light of this! This is serious to me! <laughs> Are you in there? Do you know how much I suffered? Everything I went through after becoming your sidekick. There was a battle with a supernatural organization. And for three years, we were broke as we traveled the world to evade our pursuers. We slept outdoors in a freaking hurricane. And one time, after hitting it big at the casino, we stayed in a fancy hotel room. But of course, we were broke again the next day. We walked through deserts, traversed jungles, passed over mountains, and crossed oceans. And then... And then... How could you go and die before I did? You idiot! I'm glad you found some answers. Send me a thank you card in the mail. Miss Fubi, you knew from the beginning, didn't you? Huh? Don't play dumb. You knew about her heart and who it once belonged to. <clears throat> Miss Fubi. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'd never ask her to do detective work. I'm not cruel, you know. Hey, thanks for today. Huh? It's because of you. Uh, what am I trying to say? I couldn't stay how I was. You helped me see that. I think I understand. And maybe... Natsunaki, hmm? listen, no matter who that heart used to belong to, you should live your own life now, because that's what it's for. You don't need to try to replace anybody, okay? See ya. Kimizuka, hold on, I... What's that? Did you... Kid, I'm not a detective. Uh, but I. I'm 
I'm sorry. Uh, unfortunately, this unmotivated slacker is just a sidekick. But it's okay. If it's a detective you're looking for, then there's one right here. Nagisa Natsunagi. The detective is already dead. But her dying wish... Mm. ...will never truly die. So yeah, my name is Yui Saikawa. I work as an idol. Nice to meet you. Hey. Right, okay. Um... This might sound crazy, but I need your help to prevent the theft of a sapphire worth three billion yen! Around a month ago, I got a note warning me about the crime. We went ahead and upped our vault safety measures, but on the appointed day, my security will be at my concert! That's cool, but can you shut up for a second? Maybe a little less shouting, huh? This week's Idol News! Today, we're checking out the middle school idol who can sing and dance. She's reigning supreme at the top of the charts. Let's give it up for Yui Saikawa. So cute! This idol exploded after her debut as a sixth grader due to her unique songs and dance style. Her adorable expressions and outgoing personality have made her super popular. If you're a fan of Yui Saikawa like I am, then get ready because her live is coming up. <laughs> so hype! It's next week, right? You got it! Hooray! That's you. You weren't lying. <laughs> Saikawa? I mean, sure. Maybe I do have the cutest idol saliva smeared all over both of my hands, but it's not like I'm gonna put it in a vial and auction it off online or anything. Ew, disgusting! You're not a detective, you're a giant herb! Hold on, you're not like secretly the sapphire thief who sent me the warning, are you? Well, help me! Somebody please call the police! Quickly, before he gets away! <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to burst your cute little bubble, but the police and I are actually pretty tight. Wait, seriously? This whole nation is hopelessly corrupt from top to bottom? The police, the lawyers, the politicians, and everyone else are all on the side of a panty thief? Wait, back that truck up. I don't know how you made the leap from pervert to thief, but I'm gonna need you to come back to Earth with the rest of us. And for the record, I'm not a thief or a perv, thank you. Right, just a guy who steals spit and threatens to sell it. It was a joke. I'm not a bad guy. Good guys don't really have to say that. I apologize for my sidekick. It's been kind of a crazy day. Could we possibly discuss your case tomorrow? Uh, no problem. If you think it would be better that way, then I can definitely make it work, Miss Detective. Later, guys! See you tomorrow! <laughs> so you're doing this then? Detective work? Hmm. My body kind of just moved on its own before I even knew what was happening. That's all I can do to try and keep my cool in Natsunagi's presence. I keep thinking about my former partner who died, only to find out her heart is still beating. Even if it isn't in the same body, it's a real shock. That fact alone has maxed out my brain's capacity for the day. I just don't have the headspace to think about anything else. <laughs> Though if there's one thing I know about the detective, it's that she would have laughed at me for being so sentimental. She could have at least said goodbye. Or maybe that's why she came back. To say her goodbyes. Who knows? Kimizuka? Uh, I want to say... I look forward to working with you. Thanks. Yeah, same. Right. I'm gonna head back home now. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow? Once I became aware of it, I felt like I'd been searching for someone for a long time. Even though really, it's just been a year or so. And I guess this new identity of mine established itself recently too. At least I only noticed it recently. I've been sick ever since I was a kid. Spent my whole childhood in bed. I wanted to put on running shoes and sprint around a track. I wanted to meet up with friends and goof off after school. But for me, these things were just out of reach. When I realized that, I gave up on those dreams. And without dreams, you don't have much of an identity. So yeah, I was a shell of a person. 
Till the day I woke up with a new heart. A heart that had the strength to want something. It was crying out, telling me that there was someone it needed to see. Before I knew it, I was running. You're the legendary detective. The source of hope I'd finally found was lifeless. His spirit was broken. He was as empty as I'd ever been. Something about him reminded me of myself, of the person I used to be. I couldn't just leave him. Instead, I completely lost it. I even let the idiot see me cry. No matter who that heart used to belong to, you should live your own life now, because that's what it's for, okay? Those words meant everything to me. That's why I'm going to embrace it. My fresh start in this brand new life of mine. Um, <clears throat> I apologize for my behavior. Yesterday, I mean. I appreciate that, but... What's with this dumb table? You're so far away, you're practically in a different time zone! What? Don't be silly! It's a perfectly normal size table! If you really believe that, then why do we have to shout back and forth like this? Oh, that? Well, if we spoke normally, then we obviously wouldn't be able to hear each other, you big dumb! That only reinforces my point that we're too far away. By the way, what's with the eye patch? Is your eye hurt? Oh, not really. To be honest, it's just part of my persona. Gotta stand out from the other idols, you know? Anyway, I'm sorry to ask you guys for help on such short notice. I don't mean to be dramatic, but time is of the essence. It's fine. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about now that I'm on the case. After all, I'm an ace detective. She says having never solved a single case. All right then, Saikawa. Can you please give us details of your story? Yes. It happened the other day. This arrived unexpectedly. A letter? On the day of Yui Saikawa's live performance at the Dome, we will take possession of the Sapphire valued at 3 billion yen. Nice of them to warn you. Though I gotta say, the whole cut-and-paste lettering thing seems a bit on the tropey side. I need you guys to help me prevent the theft. That's a tall order. Do you happen to know what sapphire they're referring to in the letter? Yes. It's only a guess, but I think it's our family heirloom, the Miracle Sapphire. Didn't the letter tell you the date they're planning the crime, though? I mean, you could probably just add some extra security. Not to be rude, but seems like you got a bunch. Well, I don't think that's gonna be possible. All my security will be at the venue during my performance. Oh, I get it. You mean like they're gonna be busy doing the security detail at your concert instead? Ah, uh, no! <gasps> Actually, my biggest fans. Guarding a gigantic rock doesn't matter to them at all. The only thing they really care about is watching my big song and dance number. How dare you guys call yourself security? Sorry, but if you're just gonna mess with us, then I'm leaving. Wait, Kimizuka. Uh, this girl came to us because she needed our help specifically. The least we can do is hear her out. Wow, for real? I didn't realize you were so into this. Come on. A job from a girl that lives in a small mansion? cha ching -a. I get what you're saying, but this isn't the kind of work you do just for the money, you know. No, but I'd say it's a nice benefit. She's got a point. After spending three years on the run, always on the brink of poverty. Well, I probably understand the importance of money better than anybody. Maybe she's preparing for that. I want a new swimsuit. Nope. Fine, it's whatever. Even if we have different ideas, you're right in that money still matters. So is that it? On the day of the show, you just need Natsunagi and I to stay behind and guard your home vault in lieu of your security? That's right. Nothing complicated. If that's the case, wouldn't it be better to let the police handle it? Actually, I already tried discussing it with them, but with only the letter as proof, they pretty much just wrote me off. <sighs> What's with the face? You're wondering why I didn't throw some money at them to make them listen, aren't you? <clears throat> only a pervert would think such terrible things. How exactly would that make me a pervert? You're right. Of course. The way I see it is, if you can't find any bread, then the next step is to just purchase the whole bakery. Yeah, I bet even Marie Antoinette would be shocked by that way of thinking. Will you help? First, why are you the one that's organizing all of this? It doesn't make sense. You're still just a kid. If a Saikawa family heirloom is being targeted for theft, why aren't your parents handling it? To be honest, my parents both died three years ago. 
So, the head of the Saikawa household? Would be a little lonely. Here she is! It's our family's heirloom, the Miracle Sapphire! It's huge. Doesn't really seem like your style, though. It's beautiful. Truly. Thank you. You can see why we have an airtight security system in place. Will you just go to the restroom already? Uh, how could you tell I needed to go? You have exceptional observation skills, Mr. Pervert. A normal guy could never tell such a thing. It's just a skill I learned from an old friend. I may have drank too much tea. I'll be right back. I swear. Hey, Kimizuka. <laughs> oh, now I understand. You feel pleasure when someone breathes softly in your ear. I never would have guessed you were that type of pervert. Stop finding weird reasons to make me out to be a pervert. Hey, what's up with this? It's a photo from my first live show. It's a super rare picture. You can't even find it on the internet. Just as I thought. You're becoming obsessed with me, aren't you? Uh... You're a fan, huh? Are you in love with me? It'll never work, though. I'm an idol, so falling in love is out of the question for us. Look me up in the next life, okay? Assuming my feelings and rejecting me in the same breath. Strange stuff. Anyway, where's Natsunagi? You know, her beauty is undeniable. Well, she's definitely pretty, though her personality is a bit rough at times. Oh, Natsunagi is pretty, but I meant myself. Ah, you're the kind of girl who praises herself in the third person. <laughs> Well, when it comes to the world of idols, you've got to have a ton of self-confidence or you'll straight up drown. Hmm? Rival idols might sabotage your outfits, or even stick tacks in your shoes before you go on stage. Happens all the time. But when it happens to yours truly, the perpetrators tend to disappear the next day. <laughs> what a coincidence. It is a coincidence, right? <laughs> I like you, Kimizuka. Your reactions are really funny. One of those statements was a joke. For my peace of mind, which part was the joke? The part where I said I like you. Jeez, don't tell me you fell for it. I think I get it now. You enjoy messing with me, don't you? <laughs> no, 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 that last thing was the real joke. <sighs> yeah, to be honest with you, I can't tell when you're putting me on or when you're being serious. Guess that's all par for the course in the idol world, huh? <laughs> I don't want to pry, but how are you handling this? Huh? I'm not sure what you mean. Sunday is your live stadium show, right? But with this letter you received, I guess, how do I put this? How's your mental headspace? I bet it's a lot to handle alone. I'm all right. And it's not as if I'm all by myself. <sighs> You're a really nice guy. Thanks, Kimizuka. Am I, though? It's not something people have said that often. People change. Maybe that cold, unfeeling lump in your chest is growing into a human heart. You've seen too many movies about robots who learn how to have real emotions. Whereas I've always been human, thank you. <laughs> you really are funny, Kimizuka. <sighs> I'm gonna check out the rest of your security detail. For sure, be my guest. I knew it. This gig is gonna be trouble. So, what you think? About the case, I mean. Well, don't get mad at me, but it's different than I thought. Why would I get mad? Oh, I don't know. I just didn't expect it to be so difficult. I sort of thought it'd be more along the lines of looking for lost dogs, you know? Like that movie about the pet detective? You owe every detective in Japan an enormous apology. Um... Yesterday, I had a weird dream about siesta. <laughs> really? Did she seem to be doing all right in this dream? Yeah, I guess. You didn't tell me she was pretty. She is. You know, it's kind of stupid for you to say that like her beauty is somehow your accomplishment. Two girls talk about anything cool? Uh, well, it's more like an argument. Jeez, it must have been one heck of a dream meeting if it went south that quickly. And then again, I can't say I'm surprised either. We had a real vicious argument. Just a barrage of shouting. But in the end, she asked me to take care of you, so that's that. I was the cause of the fight? Wow, I'm flattered. Uh, no, hold on a second! It's not like we were fighting over you directly or anything. Huh? Why do you look so flustered? Okay, now I'm worried for real. Ah, uh, shut up! I'm done talking about this. Listen, the point...
point is, she said we should do our best to work together, with me as the detective and you as the assistant. Yeah, sure. A new swimsuit's at stake, right? You'd be lucky to see it. You do want to see it, right? Yeah, totally. I'll die if I don't see it. I don't love the sarcasm. I guess I'll deal with it. Thanks a lot. So, once we've safely resolved the case and everything, want to go to the beach with me? That's the crap you say right before you get killed. I'm not going to die. I promise that I won't. Why would I ever choose to die and leave you all alone? I wouldn't do that to you. I see. Hurry up, Natsunagi! The rehearsal's about to start! I'm afraid to ask, but what's with that get-up? Huh? Get-up? Yes! Hold on, is this why you've been MIA all week? I mean, you've been absent from school, and you haven't responded to any of the messages I sent you. And when I finally did get a reply, it said we were going to rehearsal the day before the show. Sorry, it's just I ended up binge-watching Yui Nya's past TV appearances, and before I knew what happened, it was already today. Yui Nya? Yeah, that's what her fans call her. Oh, okay. I'm gonna put you out of your misery. You do understand what tomorrow is, right? Of course, it's you and Yaz's live show. Yes, I suppose it is. But that's not what concerns us, is it now? Our job is to protect the Miracle Sapphire from a burglar, yeah? I understand what you're saying, Natsunagi, but I'd argue familiarizing yourself with the client's background is equally as important. Fair point, but I still think that begging Saikawa to let you watch a rehearsal might be taking things a little too far, you know? Once you accept a job, you can't be afraid to go all in. And tomorrow, we're both gonna be super busy watching you and Yaz's house. So we might as well have a little fun today. Ah, oh, so today's about fun. I bet you good money that her opening number is gonna be Raspberry Grizzly. I refuse that bet because I don't know anything about her music. Come on, we're gonna miss the rehearsal! <laughs> sweat the lyrics too much. Now for my next song. You ready? Here goes. What now? Come on, Natsunagi. 81 was the last song. So you gotta know what the next one is. I said I don't know anything about our set list. And what's more, don't abbreviate Sudden Stop on the Nine Star Express to 81. Nine times nine equals 81. Geeky, but I get it. Oh, nice work, detective. Next up is Yui Nia's showstopper. This number is the whole reason why we came to watch today. Oh, really? Because it's news to me. This one's special. This song's big hook reveals what Yui Nia has sealed up inside. You lost me. Beneath that seal is Yui Saikawa's secret. Sing along if you know the words. This one's called Sapphire Phantasm. Oh, that was great. I agree. Spiko is a real pro. Hey, Kimizuka, does that guy seem suspicious? Huh? Sorry, did you say something? Matt, <laughs> <laughs> hey, who is that guy? <laughs> Quick, grab him! Just as I suspected. Kimizuka, hurry! As a person, she's lovely to behold. But for a detective, she's a little too emotional. That kindness and compassion, those things can sometimes come back to bite you. Unfortunately, Natsunagi doesn't know that yet. You okay? Uh, Mr. Pervert! I can't believe you'd really call me that after getting attacked. But if you can joke, that's a good sign. That said, this might change things up a little. Security for the vault tomorrow still matters. But I think it's worth tightening up the stadium security, too. I'm gonna need you to show me around later. Okay. Every move a detective makes is based on logic. Every single step is carefully planned. 
Can you stand? Yes. Thanks so much. However, those steps can also reveal that something doesn't add up. And that's when you discover new truths. And it's how I knew Yui Saikawa was a liar. Kimizuka, what you said yesterday, it was the truth, wasn't it? I mean, would you even be here right now if you didn't believe me? I guess that's a fair point. What's up? Is there something bothering you? Nothing in particular. I suppose I'm just feeling a bit disappointed is all. About what? Honestly, about the fact that you're the one doing all the actual work on this case. I'm the detective, aren't I? That's just how it goes sometimes. I have no doubt you're gonna have to save me one day. Up until now, that was a position I found myself in pretty frequently. If I don't do some of the work, that heart of yours will get upset with me. Oh, the show's about to get started. Okay, you're awfully invested, aren't you? Listen, I explained this to you yesterday. It's just part of the job. Sure, that's what you say. That was some pretty realistic acting. You were downright creepy yesterday, Kimizuka. Uh, that last part was unnecessary. Nobody likes being called creepy, especially by a classmate. This isn't really the time for small talk. Can you hurry it up? We have to get there before she does 81. I knew you were obsessed, but wow. Unfortunately, we're just gonna have to make do with the resources we have. The others are already short-handed. Can't have everything we want, right? Yeah, I guess. So, the people you mentioned earlier, where do you think they could be hiding? Do you really think they're already here? Who knows? It's possible there's some hiding among the crowd. Or it's also possible they're hiding in the wings like that guy was yesterday. Uh... Why'd you even wear that jacket? You've gotta be boiling alive in that thing. Yeah. A little bit. That's not good. This is a lot different from the rehearsal. Hey! Shouldn't we try to find our seats? Uh, why would we have seats? We don't even have tickets. Oh. Come on, follow me. We're going to the spot we scouted yesterday. Okay, wait up! Jeez, for real? That kid treats people like trash. Tell me she'd sing a special song? That's right. It should be right after 81. Ah, oh, I think I understand now. So yesterday's rehearsal really was work-related, huh? Did you actually doubt me? If anything is gonna happen here, it'll be during Sapphire Phantasm. Now that everyone is all fired up, let's kick it up a notch! Are you ready? Here comes 81. We should probably hurry. What the? Whoa, this isn't... The set list changed. That's terrible. You were looking forward to 81 so much. Yeah, that's not why I'm worried. Time to go. <laughs> Phantasm is her most popular song. She always does something special during the performance. I bet that will be the trigger. If I'm right, the criminal's target isn't actually the Sapphire in her vault. 
They're actually targeting Psychoa herself. I have an idea on what their motive might be, but there's no time to check every place where the perpetrator could be hiding. For right now, I just need to get close to Saikawa. Still, though, there's no guarantee I'll be able to protect her, unless we find the people behind this. Where are they? We're running out of time! The music and effects are so freaking loud. Combined with the cheering on top of it, I can't hear a thing! I can't see anything with these lights in my eyes. At this rate, I'm turning out to be pretty useless. I want to ask Natsunagi if she's seen anything, but it's impossible to communicate in all this chaos. Damn it! There's too much noise! Hang on. The noise. I bet he could hear the heartbeat of whoever's behind the attack. You there? Listen up! Can you hear the assailant? also the secret she hid from us. That's right. The miracle sapphire worth three billion yen is Yui Saikawa's left eye. I have to hurry. Hey! What do you think you're doing? That's far enough, buddy! Yui Saikawa's in danger! Let me go! You just saved my life. And this, this is all my fault. I had important information that I should have told you. Um, I'm sorry, guys, but I'm a bit lost. Can someone please explain to me what's going on here? Allow me. Where should I even start? Guess my left eye is a good place. Come to think of it. Maybe this is the whole story. <gasps> That's right. I have a false eye. I was born blind in one eye. Eventually, I began to develop a complex about it. And before long, I became a very withdrawn child. One day, my parents decided to give me a gift. It was a sapphire-colored glass eye, bluer than the ocean. I was utterly enchanted by its beauty. Thanks to my pretty new eye, I began to have confidence in myself again. It was around that time that I started to work as an idol. My father and mother were both delighted to see me acting so lively and happy. So this is what being alive feels like. I suppose that might sound stupid to some people. Those were my honest thoughts, though. But 
My new happy life didn't last very long before it all fell apart. Three years ago, when I was 11 years old, both my parents died in an accident. In their will, they left me a large house and their whole fortune, which is an outrageous amount of money. And of course this, my beautiful left eye. You see, this eye is more important to me than anything else. Because of that, it was something I wanted to keep close to my heart. And that's why I usually wear an eye patch when I'm around other people. But during some of my bigger performances, I decided I'd show it off for just a moment as a way to say I'm here. My hope was that my parents could see it from heaven. Still though, I never imagined that this sort of thing would ever happen. That criminals would target my eye. You really are an amazing detective. You saw right through my secrets. You realized that I was the criminal's true target and then you put your life on the line to save me. I'm so glad I was right to choose you guys. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you for your help? Uh, hey, that's enough. Come on, stop bowing. Yes, you could say that was the ideal outcome. Nobody was harmed. The sapphire wasn't stolen. It was your classic happy ending wrapped up with a big bow. With that, we probably could have put the situation behind us. And a week ago, I might have done just that. <laughs> However, I couldn't just keep ignoring the truth. So, Saikawa... What's huh? up? Aren't you at all worried about what's going to happen to you since you failed your mission? The one to kill us? Huh? Excuse me? Sorry, but I'm not really sure what you mean, Mr. Assistant. Come on, why on earth would an idol like me want to kill anybody? <laughs> Maybe you should give up the whole detective thing and become a mystery writer. Come on, Kimizuka. Saikawa literally just poured her heart and soul out to us and we know her secret. If there's anything beyond that, you sure as heck didn't tell me about it. True, she was kind enough to reveal one of her secrets to us. But she also hasn't confessed her lie yet. What lie? Yeah, hello? Any updates? We just wrap things here. You really are a pain in the neck sometimes. It's exactly like you said. There was a time detonator rigged up to the Sapphire's vault. I had the bomb squad dismantle it. That was a close call. You just narrowly missed being blown to pieces, kiddo. Thanks, Miss Fubi. I appreciate all your help. Well, there you have it. Uh, hold on. I thought you told me that the criminals were after Saikawa's left eye. So why would they try to blow up her house? Because there was obviously more than one target. The first one was Saikawa's sapphire left eye. But the other objective was getting rid of the two of us. Uh, what does that mean? That Saikawa knew what the criminal's plan was from the very beginning. Yep, everything she said was all part of her plan to lure us to the vault. There's no way! Do you have proof? Miss Fubi said she hadn't heard about it. Huh? About the advanced warning letter that was delivered to Saikawa's home. The truth is, she never contacted the police at all. She came straight to us. Because she needed us for a specific purpose. I just don't understand why an idol would need to do that, though. Wait, unless she's... No, I'm positive she doesn't belong to Spess. But if I had to guess, I'd say they definitely threatened her. Probably something like they'd take her eye if she didn't get rid of me. But you should know, it was never going to be that simple. These people, they want their cake and to eat it too. They wanted our lives and your left eye. Actually, I don't think they wanted it. So much as they just wanted to destroy it completely. That doesn't make any sense. Why would they care about her false eye? Because there's something more to it. It's not just an artificial eye, that's why Spess got involved. It's probably very similar to Bat's ear. To his ear? <sighs> yeah, its ability is that it can see through any object. It's basically like X-ray vision. Isn't that right, Saikawa? No need to be shy. Just tell us what you can see. Is that for self-defense? 
That's an idol for you. Able to act so calm and innocent even though you knew what I was packing. Uh, guys, what's going on here? I will never give my left eye to you. I get it now. <gasps> Spess obviously lied to her. They made her believe that we wanted to steal the sapphire. So she was thinking that we're the enemy. <gasps> then they proposed a way to help her. By giving her a way to take us out. How sick. I can't believe they'd stoop so low as to give you a gun. They didn't. I bought this myself. So how'd you know about my eye? Ordinarily, a person who only has sight in one eye has a decreased field of vision, along with a more difficult time gauging the distance of things. You, on the other hand, were able to move around freely without any noticeable impairments, despite wearing an eye patch. The truth comes out. You know, I get the feeling you never really trusted me, did you? I was genuinely fooled for a moment, though, when you asked to come to my rehearsal. You thought I was a hardcore Yui Nya fan. Yep, I was all but certain I had captivated you with my charms. <laughs> well, to be fair, even Natsunagi thought that. So yesterday, the man who attacked me, the one at my rehearsal you arranged it to? Perceptive. When a person thinks they're in danger, they're forced to react instinctively. That sounds like an awful amount of hard work. You did that just to test a theory? It's the training from my old partner. So is this it, then? Are all our cards now on the table? Uh-huh. It seems you know everything, Mr. Assistant. Then there's only one thing left to do. I'm gonna need you to lower your gun. I can't, though. Yes, you can. <laughs> Think carefully about what happened up on stage. If I hadn't been there for you, then that crossbow would have hit you right in the eye. If I were truly the enemy you believed me to be, why would I waste my time saving you? I don't know. Listen to me, Saikawa. Murdering us won't solve anything. Even if you succeed, there will still be enemies out there who are after your fake eye. <laughs> she really wants this is random but once this case is done we're thinking of going to the beach together huh? it'll be fun but i think it would be even more fun if you decided to come along saikawa <laughs> i'm not great at this but i guess what i'm trying to say here is how do you feel about being friends with me are you sure i don't get it i plotted to murder the two of you remember it was for a good reason Besides, we don't die that easily, right, Kimizuka? Uh, are you serious? I don't think I deserve to be your friend at all. I'm the one who gets to decide that. But I... I can't! I'm capable of choosing my own friends, and you're my choice. Me? So please just do me a favor. Say yes, Saikawa. This isn't normal. You do know that, right? It's kind of weird. Is it? Well, maybe I prefer it that way, because having a normal friend would be boring. Things would be a lot more fun like this. Okay, but even if we did actually become friends, it's not like that would fix my problems. If anything, I'd just end up causing you more trouble than I already have. I seriously doubt that. Huh? Listen, Saikawa. You've got some scary people targeting you, but they're also after me, so we're in this together. And you wouldn't cause us more trouble. You're teaming up with a fellow target. Just think of it as forming an alliance against a common enemy. You're going to help me? You promise? I promise. We'd love to help you. What do you say, Saikawa? 
join us and then we can be there to help each other out. if you want. <clears throat> feels great you mean the beach we're standing on then I agree but also I have to be the stick in the mud who reminds you of our purpose here which is what you know to get our hands on the rumored emerald tear and finally make a little money otherwise we're flat broke too bad since you failed to dodge my attack you must reconcile by being my servant for life that seems like a pretty extreme penalty for not dodging a beach ball come on just try to hit it back to me I doubt this game will be much fun with only two people. I see. Is that your way of saying you don't like playing games with me? Huh? Uh, no. That's not even close to what I meant. Oh. Wanna go for a ride together? Are you seriously not planning to row a single stroke? I'm too busy honoring the occasion since this is your very first task as my servant. This is hardly the first task you've given me. I always have to do what you say, regardless of any game penalties. <laughs> you know, you're in surprisingly good shape. Well, you got it out. Why? Nobody's looking. Jeez, are you really going to set the bar for what's acceptable that low? Stop. Just as I thought, you're not having fun. Again, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just realizing how far we've come. I mean, from when I met you on a plane mid-flight to now, it's been two years already. Now we're at the beach. So, what's your point? Tell me, Kimi, are you enjoying yourself or are you not? I don't know. Maybe I'll let you know when this journey ends someday. <laughs> I see. That's your preference. Oh, but if you're planning to profess any feelings for me, you'd better do it soon. I happen to be in high demand, you know. Wasn't planning on it, but thanks for the offer anyway. Yes, well, be that as it may. Be what as it may? Once we've acquired the jewel and eaten enough tasty meat dishes to make us explode, what if we were to set up a detective office somewhere? Personally, it sounds a bit ambitious for a person who doesn't have a penny to their name. 
that was how our brief summer vacation passed by. And our absurd day-to-day -day life as detective and sidekick slash servant continued. This is the work of Cerberus. Cerberus? That's an odd voice. Yeah, hey, uh, I don't handle this smell of blood well. Do you have any idea how ridiculous you look? Do you plan to work like that? <sighs> look, can we just please focus on this Cerberus thing? You think it's a Jack the Ripper copycat? That's right. Codenamed Cerberus, the guard dog of the underworld. Rumor has it that the killer gobbles up human hearts. Guess I was a bit late. No smoking. Fine, you hold it. But... It's almost time for my flight. I've got to get back to Japan. What? Uh... Already? Hold on a second, then what was the purpose of you even coming here? It was just temporary. I was transferred. Ended yesterday. Sounds like a pretty brief transfer. Yep, so anyway, I'm going to leave this case up to you guys. Fairly sure you'll be able to nab this Jack the Ripper knockoff. Wait, are you serious right now? <sighs> Unbelievable. Talk about rude. What's that you've got there? It's Miss Fuby's lighter. She gave it to me before she left. She said she didn't need it anymore because she was giving up smoking. Huh. I understand. She handed over her most valued possession to a guy she was reconnecting with after a long time, right? Yeah, she handed over too much. Not just a half-smoked cigar and lighter, but a serial killer investigation, too. Okay. What's the killer's motive? Why is this Cerberus guy going around ripping out hearts? Honestly, it's hard to imagine Cerberus choosing to commit these crimes on his own. So I believe these orders have to be coming from a higher entity. Oh? Do you think it's Spess? Well, we can gather more evidence once we've captured our suspect. Have you thought of a plan yet? It's probably no surprise to you, Kimi, but I was already well aware of the crime Cerberus was committing. Sure, that makes sense. I doubt a case as extreme as this one would ever escape your attention. It seems our suspect has a great nose. Because no matter how close I manage to get, the killer keeps getting away. Bat has his ear thing. So perhaps Cerberus could be an android with a reconstructed nose or something similar. <sighs> What's strange is our presence in town should be obvious, but these unspeakable crimes are still being committed and Cerberus should have fled by now. A trap? Actually, I was going to call it a big opportunity. Yeah, so you say. But how do you suggest we go about this pursuit? You've got it all backwards. See, we're not going to be the ones who pursue Cerberus. Cerberus is going to be the one to pursue us. Huh? Hold on, are you planning to make me the decoy? You know, your deduction skills have really improved. So what do you say we iron out the details over some afternoon tea? You've got to be the only human being on this entire planet who can go straight from a gruesome murder scene to an afternoon tea. Even more strange, weren't you gorging yourself on a giant roast before we came here? It's not my fault. I'm constantly exhausting my brain, so my three basic cravings are somewhat stronger than the average person's. Oh yeah? Is that why you're always napping? You're one to talk. You're not exactly a morning person either. You said your three basic cravings are stronger. My mistake. I only meant food and sleep. It's almost been three years since we started traveling the world together. And yet, it feels like the blink of an eye. Well, you sure did pick a strange time to start reminiscing. You are planning on coming to save me before I get murdered, right? Sidekick or no, I have no intentions of dying for you. Anyway, will this really work? You think they'll show up? Not to worry. If I've read the situation correctly, it's quite possible that tonight you'll be devoured by Cerberus. So I'm just gonna be killed? Hard to say. I'm not sure if today will be the day or not. I guess that's fair. We're only saying it's more probable that Cerberus will target me when I'm separated from you. For what it's worth, I do have an idea. So whenever you're attacked, there's one chance in 10,000 you'll live. You know, Siesta, I'd be lying if I said I was in love with those odds. I can't come near you. 
but I'll at least stay on the phone with you all night. After all, I wouldn't want you getting too lonely. For you, this isn't the first time that I've almost been murdered. Hey! Can you stop jumping to dumb conclusions? Shar, what are you doing here? Oh, I get it. Siesta must have sent you here to keep me company, is that right? Of course! Seriously! Using all of your might to hurl a girl down onto a bed like that! Where on earth did you learn such boorish behavior? I can't believe you have the nerve to lecture me right now. You snuck into my room in the middle of the night. What exactly did you think was going to happen with that approach? I didn't have a choice, since there was a possibility that Cerberus might have gotten here ahead of me. Yeah, well, be that as it may, Siesta could have at least told me that she was planning on sending you here. Keeping things under wraps is just a part of Siesta's strategy, right? What's wrong? Who are you? Start talking. Shar would never refer to Siesta by her actual name. <laughs> How impressive. Seems I've been discovered. <laughs> what kind of ability is that? The moon is lovely, isn't it? It makes my blood want to cry out. Too bad, kid. I'll be taking that heart of yours. So you really are, Cerberus. <laughs> Why are you doing all of this? What is your end game? I don't have any motive, kid. If you want the truth, I'm only carrying out my assigned mission, and getting rid of you just so happens to be a part of that task. Now you die! <laughs> Siesta. So, I still got here in time. Did you miss me? I don't understand. My sense of smell is impeccable. I should have been able to detect your presence from a mile away. How did you hide it? Well, to put it simply, it's because up until a moment ago, this room was full of a special gas. Special gas? It can't be. She anticipated this would happen. And added a supplement to the water? As a result, Cerberus's sense of smell was incapacitated. As usual, it seems like you've thought of everything. Only because I had complete faith you do exactly what you did. Consequently, I would say that I'm the winner here. It's time to accept that. Sorry, but I can't let myself get caught just yet. <laughs> it's no use. Seriously? I have a 
mission to complete. I can't fail because I still have one more that I need to acquire. Just one more living heart. In that case, you can leave us yours. Sidekick! Be on your guard. Hello. This is our first time meeting face to face, isn't it? Ace Detective. Most of the normal girls I know don't go around murdering their compatriots without any mercy. My compatriot? Certainly not. I'm afraid the mongrel was no more than a cog in a much grander scheme. So I'm guessing you'll use and discard me in the same way? I would never do anything so crass. Still, the things inscribed in the sacred writ are absolute. The sacred writ? Tell me, have you ever heard of the leaves of Agastya? I seem to recall something about a prophetic scripture written before the common era by a certain sage. Yes. You see, the sacred writ originated with the leaves of Agastya as its basis. Believe it or not, your future is written within these very pages. <laughs> Judging from that look, you think I'm joking. You're right. It's not personal. Besides myself, there's only one person on this planet that I can trust. You're what I'd call a magnet for trouble. That's your true nature, right? What? How do you know? While I doubt you really want my opinion, I believe your nature is a bit different from that. You're not a magnet for trouble. It's more that you draw it out. Make sense? I can't say that it does. Let's just say your talent is the ability to cause changes and to provoke incidents. Best described as a sort of pivot point for the world. And that's why... I'm going to have you become my partner. If we work together, then we can save this world. I'm pretty sure you mean destroy the world. And who's to say that isn't its own form of salvation? Well, in accordance with the sacred writ, your joining me will apparently come at a later date, and it's inevitable. But having things move along at a faster pace is my father's. You know, it's rather unfortunate, not to brag too much, but there are quite a few perks in partnering up with me. What do you say? It could be fun. Kimi, be my partner, will you? You're right. It is inevitable that I refuse. You didn't seriously think I was going to take your hand, did you? 
Don't be absurd. Of course not. On a different note, there's a little something I'd like you to see. deep underground in a top secret facility right below parliament if you have the ability to set up something like this in the nation's nucleus of power then it must be safe to assume you've got some influential collaborators well do you plan to release that monster in the city to feed on its citizens my goodness not at all we've given it plenty of provisions you gave it provisions oh i think i get it now that monster eats the hearts of humans. They're its source of power. It's food. My, you really do have good intuition. Come on, Pedal Juice. Time to go to work. one day. I want you to see for yourself what happens next. No. Because this ends right here and now. How ridiculous. What exactly are you going to do when you don't even have a weapon? Oh no, I didn't mean that I'd stop you. Whatever acts towards me feels forced at this point.
my goodness. You're the most burdensome psychic ever. <laughs> this It's Whatever Act feels a bit forced at this point. Siesta, what in the world? How did you ever find something so ridiculous? <clears throat> oh, it was just abandoned down the street. No freaking way. You cannot convince me you just found that lying on the road. It's totally true. Come on, don't be absurd. What, do you think I was so worried about your abduction that I somehow convinced the government to let me borrow Sirius? A top secret humanoid weapon still in development? I mean, that would be absolutely impossible, wouldn't it? You've been a whole lot busier than I expected. You really shouldn't risk your life and go to such great lengths just to save mine. I told you. That's not what happened. That's quite enough. I don't care to witness this fiery passion you seem to have for my future partner any longer. I'm jealous. Tell me, you enjoy being evil, don't you, Hal? You could say that. It's always been my destiny. I live my life in accordance with the sacred writ. Oh yeah? So what's in it for you then, huh? What's your goal? <laughs> my objective? It's fundamentally simple, to help bring about the future as predicted in the sacred writ. That alone is the meaning of my existence. I was born for that sole purpose. I see. But you must know. I'll never let you go through with your plan to destroy the people of this city! Who are you to stop destiny? It's coming. For all of you. Occupant cockpit. <clears throat> Don't you dare try and take advantage of this situation or I'll never forgive you. You should know me better than that by now, silly. <laughs> it's now or never. Serious! Charge! shocked that you create a monster this vile. Dear girl, why would you get in my way? Because apprehending you is my mission. They're running. Don't worry. Whatever happens, I will not let them get away. Move, but your battle crop could use some workshopping. Everyone's a critic. So persistent. Earlier, you said that apprehending us was your mission. Why is that? Do you have a clear reason why you work as a detective? Protecting people? It was not your choice. You were born for this particular existence, nothing more. You and I are very much the same. Just as you were born to defend the world, I was born to destroy it. I'm only doing exactly what I was created to do. So you're saying we're the same, trying to imply that there's no difference between good and evil? A difference between the two. It doesn't matter to me if there is one. So I'm evil, and you're good. It doesn't bother me. I can live with that. So what now? Sidekick. Huh? Let's fly. What? 
engines at full throttle. or something? You had no right to scold me earlier. I mean, you're clearly risking your life to look for me. You heard what I said, didn't you? No matter what, you were supposed to clear out of... You're the stupid one. Why are you always so thoughtless? And how dare you try and leave me behind? Oh. I never had any intention of dying here. But if only one of us were to survive, well... Really, it was just a last resort, and your future matters quite a bit to me. In the end... Shut up, Siesta! Uh... Listen, three years ago, when you asked me to join you on that plane, you said you'd keep me safe. And that means you have to look after me until the bitter end. Honestly, I'm not very confident I can escape Spes without your help. I'm completely lost without you. Do you understand? Because if you do, then you need to stay true to your word and never abandon me again. I... In my entire life, I swear no one has ever shouted at me this much. I enjoy it. Seeing you get all worked up over me. What can I say? You're adorable. Wait, is adorable a good thing? <laughs> so you're completely lost without me, huh? Wow. Hey, don't take that out of context. Once again, it seems I've been offered a completely indecent proposal. I have never proposed. <laughs> when you turn 18 years old, let's have a different conversation about this. But I told you. <sighs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> I vow to you. I'll never die, or leave you alone without properly warning you about it first. You're welcome. Psychic! No, not yet. It's not my time to die. It isn't. Dying in a place like this was never meant to be my destiny. If I'm not the one who wins here, that would mean Father was wrong about everything in these pages. You were wrong. Accept it. This matter is over. Now all that you'll feel is my blade running through you. You will not walk away from here. Get out of the way! Run! She's coming straight for you! Siesta! A reason, a, a purpose. 
Why do I exist? What have you done? You want answers? You can go find them in hell. <laughs> no! Chameleon! There's someone else. No. I don't know. They're not exactly the juiciest apples. Please don't act like a baby while I'm hand feeding you. There's no way out of this. I'm injured. You hurt your leg. Your hands are still available. Siesta sustained a leg injury after falling in battle a few days before. And it'll take a couple of weeks to fully heal. Normally, we would have continued to pursue hell. But with Siesta down, nothing much could be done. Are you all right, Kimi? Uh, oh, sure. I don't really mind wasting all my time to care for such a self-indulgent partner. Good. That's perfect. Are you just completely ignoring my sarcasm now? Hurry up and get to feeling better. I'm no good at being a housewife. It was actually your dream to live with me, am I right? Shouldn't you try and let yourself enjoy it even a little bit? We don't really live together. We're just being practical. Listen, it's important that you learn how to take care of certain things on your own. I mean, what are you planning to do when I'm not around anymore? Please, stop saying things like that. Here we go again. You're about to shout at me. Uh, where are you going? You want the juiciest apples I can find, right? Uh. <laughs> what? Why in the world would you ever laugh at me like that? Kimmy, you're so smitten with me, aren't you? Uh, no, just... I don't know what you mean. No, oh, seeing you flustered like this is obscenely cute. <laughs> Shut up! You suck! Lesson learned. I vow never to spoil her like this again. like these were bound to start happening to me again. says not to, but I'm compelled to ask. Going to be attacked by whom? You, creepy! I don't care what you do to my body, but you're dead wrong if you think you could ever take control of my heart! I don't quite know where these suspicions are coming from. Kinda ridiculous. Hey, sorry, but I'm not interested in children, got it? Who are you calling a child? How about you try chilling out? I think this situation calls for introductions. My name is Kimihiko Kimizuka. What's yours? I guess my... My name is Alicia? Uh, wait, why was that in question form? Did you just come from Wonderland or something? I'm real hungry. This conversation has weird flow. Any good? Delicious and really sweet. Uh, whoa, did you eat every one of them? 
Maybe. Where do you think we are? Where do I think we are? How about where do you live and where are your parents? I don't know. Hmm. Then you likely have amnesia. <gasps> Can you remember anything? Uh, let's see. Only that I'm 17 years old as of this year. Well, forget that. You've definitely got your age wrong. <laughs> I thought she was lost or something, but this got complicated really fast. I propose we go to the police. Too kind of you. It's just... It seemed like the least I could do since you genuinely care about me and spoil me all the time. I wouldn't want you to think I'm selfish or anything, and I truly appreciate your attention to detail. Uh... <laughs> so where are the apples? Uh... Well, here's the deal. Himizuka! Oh. <laughs> Aren't there any smaller towels here? Darjeeling tea could not smell more fragrant. Yeah, it's perfect with a nice apple pie. <laughs> you had better believe that you will never see me in the kitchen with an apron or whisk ever again, Kimi. Oh no, what a travesty. I won't know what to do now that I have nothing left to live for. <laughs> Yikes, I'm sorry. Forget what I said. I swear I'll make it up to you. This apple-free apple pie is really tasty. <laughs> really? The most important lesson today is that you should have brought her to me from the very beginning. A missing girl who's suffering from amnesia is a classic situation for a detective to handle. Yeah, you're right. You said your name's Alicia, right? And you don't remember your full name or any other details like that? <sighs> no, all I know for sure is that I'm 17 years old. You must mean you're seven. <laughs> 17! If I were a betting man, she's about 12 or 13. At least that's the idea I get from looking at her calves. This is not the time to disclose your peculiar fetishes. Alicia, we can help you and take on the responsibility of figuring out who you are. But there's no way we can do it for free. Wait, are you serious? You're gonna make a kid pay? Her age means nothing. She will still require a lot of our time and attention. And it's important for her to learn that no one ever gets anything for free in this cruel world. That's definitely true. How am I supposed to pay you, then? How about this? Do the work of a legendary detective instead of me. You want me to be a detective? Wait a sec. Don't you think that's a bit much to be asking of a child? Maybe, but I have a feeling. <sighs> okay, I get it. You're out of business because of your injury, and you want me to take on the detective role with Alicia working as my sidekick. No thank you. Wrong. There's no other way to say this. You just have the face of a sidekick. This is absurd. If you accept this offer, then we'll commit to taking care of you and you can live with us. Hey, wait, I'm not sure if I'm cut out to suddenly work as a detective. If you do, you can order your sidekick around however you want. Oh, yay! I'll do it! I want to be a legendary detective! That was an appalling negotiation. So, tell me all about what it means to be a top secret sleuth! Our Jack the Ripper seems to have come back to haunt us. Whoa, Fubi. What? I thought you went back to Japan. No. I stayed to take care of a thing. More importantly, when did you two pop out a kid? You need to get your eyes checked. Hmm. Can we, like, rewind? Did you say our Jack the Ripper's back? Yeah. We discovered another victim missing a heart yesterday. M.O. resembles what we've seen before. What the? That doesn't make sense. Because Cerberus was... 
you tell. The truth is, we have some information that may prove to be quite useful in pursuing her. It's still just a rumor, but we have intel about an object that could potentially bring down Spess. It's right here in the city. And apparently, said object is being referred to as the Eye of Sapphire. I don't have my detective cosplay. Huh? Just look at you. You're basically dressed for Halloween. Do you consider that looking the part? These are hand-me-downs from Siesta. Yes, of course. Makes perfect sense. Anyway, you really want to do a good job as a substitute detective? Oh, yeah! In her new role, complemented by a ridiculous outfit, Alicia took up the search for the Eye of Sapphire. The two of us were tasked with getting the lay of the land and a feel on things. We shouldn't waste time. Let's get going. Huh? Uh... Come back here! <laughs> Wait, Alicia! Running is the funnest thing in the world! Seeing you frolicking in the sun like a careless little girl is pretty adorable. But have sympathy for the sap who has to chase you around! Alicia, you have to listen. Being curious about everything you see is really cool and all, but let's not forget we still have no idea as to who you really are. You're gonna have to listen to me more closely. Running around by yourself is not allowed. Okay, fine. But I don't like it when you treat me like a baby! Fair enough. We're set then. Now let's go. Wait a minute. Why do you have to hold my hand? For real, you gotta quit treating me like I'm a little kid! I don't know if you know or not, but you should learn to raise your hand like this at crosswalks. Seriously, I already told you I'm 17 a million times! Probably. At least I believed in my heart I was sort of close to that age. Listen. I don't think you should worry about it so much. Look, it's right here, Kimi! Mm -hmm. We just solved the case! Ah, mm -hmm. oh, would you look at that. <laughs> wait, wait, you aren't thinking I'll just buy it. Why wouldn't you? Because I can't. Why, are you poor or something? You hush. Besides, that's a common gemstone. What we're looking for is far more elusive. Maybe, like, hidden away deep underground somewhere. An underground treasure. I've got it! You haven't got it! I'm pretty damn sure you haven't got it! Alicia, please stop! Mistake magnet. She's gone? What a pain. <sighs> this looks really sweet. Alicia! No! That's probably poisonous! This is so exhausting. Yeah, right, getting the lay of the land. More like babysitting. When she realized she had amnesia, she was seriously shaken up. But now she's overjoyed to be a detective. Are you having fun? Oh yeah, so much fun! It's been way too long since I've been outside! That's strange. Way too long? What do you mean by that? <gasps> no clue. Sometimes I just say what comes to the top of my head. Were you locked up in a room somewhere? Or maybe a hospital? Was I? I don't remember. In 
thinking about it only makes my head throb. Well, don't force yourself to recall too much at once. Sometimes with cases like this, time sorts out the details for you. And you can rest assured once Siesta feels better, <laughs> she'll help. See something you like? Look! Oh, that's definitely a no. You mean, that's not it? Finding it on the street like that would take luck we don't have. I think maybe it might be a good time for us to head on home. What? She's gone? <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, never a dull moment with this girl. Looks like my days will be spent chasing after her. <laughs> Here's to Siesta and her full recovery. Toasts have we done already? I've lost count. I think that should be good enough to be our last one. I'm feeling nice and relaxed. But I see something on the menu I think you'd like. Okay, go ahead and order it for me. Oh. Wait. Oh, geez, it's already nine. Oh, wow, nine? You know, it's best if you lay off the spicy food. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get indigestion again and won't be able to sleep tonight. Well then, I have some antacid with me. You should take some to be on the safe side. That makes sense. Give it to me. Whoa. Huh? It's freaky watching you two work together. Kimizuka, you let Siesta decide everything for you. Well, Siesta seems like you do whatever he says without any questions. It's simple. We trust each other more than we trust ourselves. Basically what you mean is you're lo- <coughs> Hi, excuse me, waiter. I would like to place another order, please. Water off a duck's back. Even obnoxious children don't bother her. You know it's wrong for her to love grown-ups. Funny you say that when you act like a teenager! I wanna have another drink. A waiter! I'll have a Cinderella, please! Man, I'm so relieved you have a safe place to stay now, with us. Oh yeah! And yesterday I even went to church! It was so fun, I loved it! Well... It sounds like we're still just treating the symptoms. As long as you have no memory and we can't figure out who you are, then we don't have a real solution to our problem. I had the chance to play with a bunch of kids who were the only other orphans I've ever met. I was so happy it felt just like being in school. Oh. I remember school. I haven't attended in a while either. Why are you looking at me like that? The crepes and takoyaki were pretty tasty, right? I only remember that I ate way too much and ended up getting a terrible stomach ache. <laughs> Is there something you'd like to say? Not a word. I have to admit, that ribbon was cute on you. I'd say you were staring quite a bit. I did not stare. I was casually observing. Of course, I don't get it. Okay, now I think you're just trying to mess with me. The ribbon sounds nice. Okay, I'll get you one soon. Really? Yay! I sure would love to wear one. And try to enroll at a real school. Actually, I probably don't need to go to school at all, huh? Because now I've got important work to do. Like detective assignments? Yep. I definitely don't have time for homework and grades. I have to assume our mystery's unsolved, as you still haven't found the Eye of Sapphire anywhere. Just get off my back. I know I gotta find it, okay? Hey, hang on. You don't mean you're going out now. And I don't need you to babysit me! Of course. You are always such an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> it's already dark outside. The ghosts will be out. Maybe I'll go to bed early, so I can start detecting in the morning. <clears throat> anyway, you'll see! There's no way I won't have this mystery solved tomorrow! Here you are. One 
Cinderella. After those dramatics, she took off without even seeing her drink. She is most definitely one of a kind. These past two weeks, they must have been rough. Uh, sort of. But what do we do now? There's the Alicia question, but then there's hell, too. In my life, I've never taken on a case and then abandoned my mission. I see. So we're planning to go on living this way for a while, then? I think so. Living together, just the two of us. You okay? Yeah. It's just, this is really peaceful. You're wallowing in sentimentality. It's not anything like that. <clears throat> hey, what is this? Crap, that's bitter. I am on to you. Come on, it's only juice. We're celebrating me today, right? Live a little with me for once. Want anything? To drink, I mean. I said I've had enough. You have to make something up to me, remember? What are you talking about? Oh, the apple pie incident from a while back? I thought... You do whatever I ask. Fine. Only one more, though. Sure. Cross my heart. And then, you know what? When I was a little girl, I ate these watermelon seeds one time, and then... I was so nervous, because I'd... What did I do if they suddenly sprouted my stomach and come out of my mouth? <laughs> Are things starting to get wobbly in here, or... Am I starting to fade because I'm so exhausted? Just one more, she kept promising me over and over again. By the time we left, she'd set it for ten rounds. Uh, sidekick, are you listening to a word I'm saying? Yeah, of course I'm listening. You were talking about whether watermelons are a vegetable or a fruit? You are listening. I mean, the grocery store gave me a muskmelon when I actually asked for a watermelon, and I was, like, truly shocked. We've been talking past each other, and from what I can tell, she's been feeding me nothing but nonsense this entire time. I find this quite suspicious. Why would the perfectly flawless, calm, and collected greatest legendary detective in history spew out such useless babble? Maybe she's speaking in a top-secret code or something. Why have you stayed so far away from me this whole time? Why don't you come over here? On the bed? Uh-huh. Let's sit closer and have a little convo. Don't you think it's awkward? A young guy and a girl sitting alone on a bed. So no? Of course, it's no problem. I'd say being in bed together is an important first for us, wouldn't you? I feel like we're really close, Kimi. But you do have the kind of face that's easy to forget quickly. Hey, why would you say that? <laughs> it's because tormenting you is fun. And besides, I think you kind of like being tormented by me, don't you? Stop making up such absurd things. So, would you prefer I never toy with you ever again, or what? Would you prefer I not talk to you? <laughs> you really are kind of perfect. I hate it. Shut up. That sad face of yours is so sweet. That's not exactly a compliment. Who knows? I might forget it in a couple of days, though. But still, there's no forgetting the last three years we've spent together. I've been lucky to have you. <laughs> I feel like this conversation has gotten a little too serious. What would be left of you if you took away your serious uh, tone? That's offensive. It sounds like you think I'm not any fun at all. So, just for once, wanna do something not so serious?
feel like death. I don't know what yesterday's me was thinking, but no way this doesn't complicate things. Sidekick, I want you to hold out your arm for me. Easy now, Siesta. Let's discuss things before you pull out a super scary syringe, okay? It's fine. It'll only hurt for a second. The solution in the shot has the power to erase any recent memories. <laughs> Remember when we captured that restroom Hanako at the big festival? This contains a tiny bit of the same drug that caused memory loss for all those people at your school. Whoa, that's horrifying. It's been conclusively proven to be effective. Stay still, sidekick. Hold out your arm. <laughs> Sounds like somebody's here. Shouldn't we answer? Don't hiss like that. What's up? It sounded really scary in here. What are you two doing? find the Eye of Sapphire or anything like that last night, did you? I don't know if the Eye of Sapphire is something someone made up, so... It's more important to take care of your hurt eye, which definitely exists. <laughs> I can't believe you noticed. Dad, we've only been working closely together for two whole weeks! My vision was getting worse after my left eye was wounded in that battle with Hell and Chameleon. That was the reason I kept losing track of Alicia darting around town. I don't think it's gonna heal unless you start wearing an eye patch. I'm beginning to realize I may have been misreading this little girl. She came off as such a chaotic and emotional child. A whirlwind of mischief. But as time <laughs> passes, I see her aim is true. That's gonna be my final answer, am I right? So what is she talking about? Was this the outcome you wanted this whole time? Yes, just as I calculated. Wow, you are not a good liar. So what if quick-witted responses aren't my forte? It's been too long since I've seen that look on your face. You can hush now. Aren't you a bit too fond? of a present that you got from a much younger girl. Uh, no, absolutely not. It's nothing like that. I thought she showed me genuine kindness. And that was wrong of me. I'm sorry. The truth of the matter is, I'm just ashamed of myself because I failed to show the same kind of consideration about your injured eye. Is that all it is? It's nice to know you're human, too. I had no idea you could be swayed by such silly emotions so easily. Is that so? <laughs> what is it? Nothing. Kimizuka here. Hey, you punk. You seem to have kept yourself alive. So you two put on quite the show at the Parliament building. Hey, Fubi, isn't that something you should have said last time we met up? Actually, we took quite a beating as a result of the Jack the Ripper case you brought our way. Huh? When do you think we last met up? It was just two weeks ago, Fubi, so not too long. Don't you remember how you told us about the Eye of Sapphire? That never happened. Last time I saw you two was at the church. 
Who could you have possibly mistaken me for? If it wasn't you, then who is... Oh no, I remember now. Fubi used the lighter she'd already given me days before. Hello? Are you still there? Hey! Sidekick! If it wasn't Fubi that day, it must have been... The carrots in here are as hard as rocks. Maybe you'll think twice before you ask me to cook again. Your face makes me think you did this on purpose. I didn't, but hey, I couldn't find the kitchen knife anywhere. Now, more importantly... Yeah, Cerberus is dead. I don't think there's any doubt about that much. So, who was the Fubi imposter then? I'm starting to wonder if Hell might have been the one impersonating our female detective friend. Hell? But she didn't have the ability to shapeshift. All androids are created with an object at their core that is unique to them. By taking over another android's core, they can inherit special capabilities. You're talking about that black gemstone. So are you saying Hell has inherited both Cerberus's powers and his mission, and she's harvesting people's hearts? Could be. Or... It could be purely for her own benefit. So they can mix and match parts like those paper dress-up dolls? Exactly. As androids, they have that ability. Nevertheless, it doesn't change what needs to be done. We are going to put a stop to the string of murders, no matter what. Alright then. I guess things are about to get busy. And if so, what do we do about... If you're talking about me, don't worry. What the... Alicia, when would you get here? Um, are we having curry or is this a salad? Anyway, the murder case needs to take priority, right? Did you show up here uninvited to state the obvious, or just insult the food? That's rude of you, but I only want to help you with this case! I figured as much, but it's out of the question. Why can't I? It's dangerous. Four people have already turned up dead. Have you forgotten that I helped Kimizuka solve some of his cases before this? Searching for cats, delivering lost wallets to the police. Does it matter if it's big or small? A case is a case! That's a big stretch. It is not, and you know it! Everybody take a breath. I'm a detective. I am. Alicia, you were just a substitute. Your services are not required. <sighs> Come on, Siesta. You don't have to be so harsh. I see. So you're taking her side, then? I didn't say that. Don't lie. I always knew you liked little girls. Good. Oh, you're right. That knife really isn't in here. I don't like the fact that you're looking for a knife while trying to hide your anger. Whatever. In that case, I'll look into it my own way. Ha! I don't care. I'll solve this case without you. You'll see. I'll prove to you that I'm just as good a detective as you are. That's how it's gonna be. Starting tomorrow, you'll help me, Kimizuka. Okay, I'll help. Let's go solve this. Yay! Kimizuka's still gonna be my sidekick and we're gonna stop these murders! <laughs> no, he's... Not yours. Uh. There it was. We'd been notified. A fifth victim had been robbed of a heart. I'm sorry. I know it's all still fresh. Don't be. It's your job, and I want whoever did this to be caught. I'm happy to help in any way I can. I'll go and make us a pot of tea. Oh, uh. Are you all right, ma'am? I'm sorry. It was so sudden. I just can't believe she's really gone. It feels like a bad dream. You see, my late husband died tragically young as well, so all this time it's just been my daughter and myself. I laid nothing but burden after burden upon her. And yet she would always say to me, I'm 
going to figure out some way to earn a lot of money, Mom, so I can make things easier for you, I promise. She transformed herself into something truly amazing, and even had this lovely house built for me. The day she died, did you notice whether your daughter was behaving any differently than usual? Please, Siesta. There was no change. Before she left, she was acting the same sweet way as always. Did her corpse seem strange at all? <gasps> Siesta, stop. My daughter, she was my pride and joy. A better child than a woman like me could ever deserve. And it pains me to say I was never able to give her anything in life. I only took from her. And now I will never be able to repay her. in your voice, I somehow felt like my daughter was speaking right to me. Back there, why did you stop me? These murders are crimes of opportunity against random victims. So there's no need for questions like whether a victim behaved differently than usual. It was tactless. Just because the previous cases have been random victims doesn't mean that's the situation here. I had to ask those questions. How else would I find out if this case was an outlier? When it comes to taking down Hell, I'll use any means necessary. You'll see. I'll catch her, no matter what. But you, you're not like that, Kimi. Hang on. Why are you- Despite that. You were still the only one I trusted. Thanks, I guess. I'm calling it a day. See you. You can stop hiding now, Alicia. Come on out. Oops. Busted. Th you know, this kind of thing tends to happen from time to time. We've been traveling together for three whole years. Having a fight or two is only natural. People get into spats. It happens. I think it'd be weird if we didn't fight. To be fair, this may be the first time we've had a serious confrontation, but what of it? You know what I mean? The thing is, Siesta and me, we're fine. Are you? Because you seem real worried. Uh, maybe we should change the subject. So, on another note, It's not actually a thank you gift, though. <gasps> Thanks so much. Well, this is the first time I've ever gotten a present from anyone. It's your first present? <sighs> I can't prove it, but... I think that before I lost my memory, I was a bad kid. You say that like you're not a bad kid now, and we both know you are. Oh, shut up! I'm a super good kid! I'm lively, adorable, and outspoken, and everyone loves me! Good one. It's not a joke! You mean uh, it! Uh... <laughs> hey. Put this ring on me. This guy? You, Kimizuka. On this girl. On me. <laughs> on the right finger, or I'll be mad. Does it have to go on that hand? Well, since it's just pretend, okay. Now 
you say your vows. Wait, I thought this was just the proposal. <laughs> You're something else. <clears throat> vows, okay? From this day on, for a reasonable length of time, we'll work together. I swear it on this ring. That sounded like a business contract. I know, because that's what it is. I was too hard on you earlier. Siesta. That said, I'm right, and I know I'm right, so I don't yield that point. But at the same time, I can acknowledge that I shouldn't have been so rude about it. I was wrong uh... to try and bully you into seeing things the way I do, even though my way is far superior. Because there are some aspects of this case you should rethink. Wait, no, I don't want to rehash the argument. Suffice to say that I'm sorry, and I'd like a clean uh... slate. Congratulations. Huh? Siesta? Uh. Come on. Siesta? Can you hear me? No, I can't. What is she, a child? Hey, Siesta. This whole Alicia thing. It's still a mystery, don't you think? I'll say. It's a total mystery to me. Sorry, I'm going out for a bit. My fiance's in trouble. Alicia! Hey, are you all right? Yes, just stay with me. The left side of his chest has been sliced up. He seems to have lost consciousness, but I don't think his life is actually in jeopardy. This guy's a police officer, so... Sidekick? I've gotta call an ambulance. Hello? I need to get Alicia to safety. You handle this. Again. Did you say I'm obviously cute? Okay, I'll have someone clean out your ears. You're not supposed to be mean to the injured. If you can toss around banter like this, you're fine. That aside, Kimizuka, how were you able to get to that place so quickly? Oh, because I put a tracking device on you. Oh, well, yeah, that does make some sense. <laughs> you just casually said something awful again, didn't you? Thanks, I thought my face fell through clean. A tracking device? Got it all wrong. Look, you take off at the drop of a hat. This was a precautionary measure. Where did it wear? Did you attach it? I'll give you one guess, but you should probably get more kid appropriate undies. <laughs> you are the worst! That is the most horrifying place imaginable! And without that device, you wouldn't have been rescued, so. You see? I can constantly monitor your vital signs. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so then, why were you there? to experience it, the sadness that I felt. And on top of that, it's my job. I don't understand. Why are you so obsessed with this? I remember being in a room with no light or even sound. A dark, dark, boring world full of nothing but suffering. But then, not too long ago, the world got bigger. The light came in. I could hear sounds, and I, I learned how sweet apples were. I wanted to try a different way of living. If I could be reborn as a whole new person, and I could work as a detective, then I wanted to live for that alone. Oh, Alicia. Wow. 
I've been talking way too much. I'm feeling sleepy now. I'll stay with you until morning. You can rest easy. Thank you. Will you hold my hand there? People might call you a baby, though. Baby. As long as you're holding my hand, I don't care. If that's what you want. Little legendary detective. What in the world are you doing here? I could ask the same of you. I only came to this place in pursuit of hell. Why'd you think hell would come here? You've realized it too by now, haven't you? Realized what? That if there was some other way for the culprit to get the hearts, then there wouldn't have been a single murder. I have, and today that police officer was almost the next victim. That's right. The officer was injured on the left side of his chest. Without question, Hell attacked him. So then why was she, Alicia, wounded on her right shoulder? Is it possible the cop shot her? And if that is the case, did he shoot her in self-defense? Get out of my way, Siesta. I have to... Didn't you recognize the knife? The one at the scene? I don't know what you're talking about. I had to get Alicia to safety. I couldn't check every little thing. It came from our place. That knife went missing from our kitchen. What really matters now is that we find Alicia right away. Come on. You had to have known too. Admit it, Kimi. That's the real reason you put a tracking device in that ring you gave her. That's enough! Alicia's not hell. She can't be. And what about the Fubi imposter? You immediately assumed she was hell too, right? And yet Alicia was there with us. Alicia is hell. She is hell transformed. And so, we have to assume that imposter was some other adversary. Are you telling me there's another android like hell out there? Yes, it seems reasonable to assume as much. Some sort of ringleader presiding over them all, perhaps. What? That's just ridiculous. Hell is our priority, though. We have to find her, and quickly. You mean Alicia! She's not Hell! She's not! She's just Alicia! I'm sure of it. Immediately after Hell stabbed herself in the heart, the opportunist killer harvesting hearts showed up. Then, at that very time, an unidentified girl with amnesia suddenly appeared in front of us. So, sidekick, are you gonna lie to yourself and insist it's just a coincidence? Did you know from the beginning? Of course not. If it had dawned on me as soon as we met her, I wouldn't have let so many people die. But I still could never bring myself to distrust her. This is completely absurd. Are you saying that everything we knew about Alicia was a lie? All the crying? The beautiful words she said to that victim's mother? Are you telling me she faked all of it? I think that part was real. There's no doubt in my mind Alicia's words really did help that woman. Then, in the left-hand side of Alicia's chest, that woman's daughter's heart. Sorry. Guess I'll never be a legendary detective. Uh. Alicia... Inside of this body, I carry a whole other version of myself. It's like I live in the background, so I don't have that many memories, and I have no idea who I really am. That's why I kept saying strange things, like when I told you the real me was 17. Honestly, I knew it all along on some level, but I pretended not to know that the other me was committing those terrible crimes. But for some reason, 
Miss Kimizuka and I were investigating, I prayed someone else was the real culprit. I had to believe the lie that I wasn't guilty. Felicia. <laughs> You're not a bad kid. You may be a little self-centered, and you have caused a lot of people undue suffering. But at your core, you are a kind person. I've seen you share in people's joy and heartbreak. You can even get angry and feel sadness on other people's behalf. Felicia, you're not... I knew it was an impossible hope. And yet, I still... Himizuka. I'm grateful. It was short, but it was fun while it lasted. Please believe me when I say that... I wanted to keep doing detective work with you. But I... I can't stay with you anymore. All I wanted was for Alicia to stay just like this. The truth is... I was never anything but bad. But what I wanted would have taken a miracle. Understand. Emotions are what make us human. Siesta, haven't you learned anything? My, my. Did I interrupt the spat? <gasps> I've found her at last. So troublesome. Here I believe she'd just strayed when I let my attention wander elsewhere. To think that she'd not only changed form, but also lost her memory. Chameleon! Where do you intend to take Alicia? Approximately 700 nautical miles northwest of here is our isolated island base. If you're implying that you mean to come for her, we'll be eagerly awaiting your arrival. No, wait! Shot. Are you dumb, Kimi? I won't be apologizing. Fine, don't. I get it. I know you were just doing what you felt was right, and I was doing what I thought was right. So, I can see why you wouldn't apologize. I have no reason to either, and I'm fine with that. Let's go to the grocery store first. And when we get there, we'll buy the biggest, reddest, roundest apples we can find. And then let's make the biggest, most delicious apple pie ever baked, and brew the best pot of tea ever brewed. And then... We'll begin our journey... to save our friend. There it is. That has to be Spess's base. Is that where we think this Alicia is being held? Our goals are quite clear. We need to subdue Hell and rescue Alicia. The fifth heart that she harvested as Jack the Ripper has most likely worn down by now, and is no longer functioning properly. So, you're saying that this is our only chance? Three years after our battle with Spess first began, and it could all end here. Sidekick. Would you like for me to pat your head? That is quite the non sequitur, don't you think? Pat my head! I'm so scared, Mom! Your moods really are all over the place, huh? Guess that's a no? No thanks. I'm not interested in being embarrassed right now. <laughs> mm. Fine! You can
can have a turn now. Come here. Uh, um, that's quite a dramatic pose for just a head rub. We've got time, so I thought I'd give you a hug, too. Don't try to press your chest up against a guy like that's an everyday occurrence. You have a strange way of seeing the world. Okay, fine. No hug, then. Some other time. Yeah, I doubt that time will come. That's just silly. You think I could do something so cringy? Why are you being so stubborn? You know, one day you're going to regret it. I mean, since you have no one else in the world besides Mom. I am not stubborn. And anyway, it's not like Siesta has anyone else but me either. She doesn't. You're right about that. Mom has no one else. here. That's weird. And I was mentally prepared for at least two or three fights. Fortunately for you, I am not hell. <laughs> Now's your bat? Oh, I do like that reaction. But no, I'm not bat either. Tell us who you are, Ving! I'm the parent. You mean your Spess's parent? A parent who kills his children indiscriminately. You're nothing more than a monster. Wrong again. I am neither person nor monster, in fact. I am just sea. A plant life form that came to this planet from outer space. <laughs> Though I only say plant because the limits of your human taxonomy have no label for what I am. Oh, come on, man. Give me a break. Are you telling me we've been fighting aliens this whole time? So what are your intentions on Earth? Answer her, Seed. Why is Spess committing acts of terrorism here? For the survival of my species. Our mission here is to blanket this planet with seeds. And only that. The most primal drive of all living things is to leave behind offspring. So in birthing clones like this one, I maximize the chances we'll survive. Do you really think the survival of your species warrants killing innocent human beings? I'm just purging the alien life form that stands in the way of our propagation. What's the problem with that? You're the only alien life form here, buddy. The seeds of my fallen brethren have now been taken in by the one you seek to destroy. What? By hell, you mean? Where is Hell? She isn't here. Which means there's only one conceivable place she could be, no. <gasps> Himizuka, where's Mom? Right, I know. Let's go! <laughs> it looks like I'll get to have my fair share of fun, too. It can't be. Chameleon. No, 
siesta. Please stop playing around. You promised you wouldn't go off and die without warning me. Come on. Forgive me for this. Never in a million years did I imagine you'd come find me here, Kimi. <laughs> How unfortunate that my plan has gone awry. I suppose the root cause of it all must be that your love for me was far deeper than I ever imagined. That fact aside, Kimi, performing CPR was a perfectly fine response. But normally the first step is to check if the patient is breathing on their own before mouth to mouth. You mean your heart was beating before I started? No, it wasn't beating, but... So it was stopped. I have to admit I was outmatched against Chameleon. Since fighting him seemed like a hassle, I'd stopped my own heart and was playing dead. Wait, you can stop your own heart? <laughs> I can't believe I'm just now asking this, but what kind of person are you? Hey, wait. Could it be that you've gone weak in the knees with relief, knowing that I'm okay? Does this mean I can tell you my honest feelings right now? Please don't. Please. I refuse to listen. I'll tell you anyway. I think you're extremely cute. Uh, la la la, can't hear! What to do? Oh, perhaps I should pat you on the head after all. No, you should not. Shall I hug you then? Not a chance. Or in your words, press my chest against you. I strongly advise that you never utter that sentence to another guy ever. Oh? What's the big deal? You touched my chest earlier. This is so absurd. Oh, I get it. You're trying to murder me, aren't you? By embarrassment. <laughs> Teasing you is truly a pleasure, Kimi. It truly was a pleasure. Siesta. At some point, would you hold me to your chest and comfort me? That is, if we survive this island ordeal. So... Who are you? Which one? Look closely at my form, and I bet you can tell. You're hell. I suppose this means we can consider you recovered? Indeed. Thanks to Father, I am. And now you die. Not today, hell. Because I can promise you, I'll fulfill Alicia's wish without fail. You're wrong. I promise that you'll die here today. You can't save that girl. <laughs> you are so pathetic. Do you really want to save her ladyship that desperately? What? Her ladyship? Did you notice? This body is different. Fortunately, it's not quite like those of the other Spess leaders. Originally, it was ordinary, but not for long. Because of this body's peculiarity, many experiments were performed on it. First pain, then heat, then more pain and heat and torment. Apparently, her ladyship suffered some very harsh trials. One day, when she could no longer endure that agony, her ladyship decided she would bring me into being. So that's the story. A second personality Alicia generated when she couldn't stand the agony anymore. That's what hell is. Half of us in pure anguish, the other in sorrow. That's how the two of us have survived together. In that case, I can help you. Allow me. I'd be happy to put you out of your misery right now. Don't hurt me, Kimisuka! Alicia! Don't be fooled. <laughs> if only you had shot me through the heart or in the head, then this would all be over. Her ladyship is that important to you. Such a soft-hearted bunch. You'll never defeat me. Fine? What the hell? What are... Well, we are in the 
enemy's stronghold. I see. So you expected something like this. What I expect is to finish you! <laughs> self-protection instincts. The one who first took on Spess's abilities and intentions was Alicia. You're the desperate one. All you ever wanted was to get close to Spess. And you are just an imposter. Tell me, what reason would I have to do that? And why would I ever devote myself so completely to Spess? Because you wanted to be loved. <gasps> loved by a father figure. It's quite simple. You wanted a father to love you. You needed to be seen and appreciated. Nothing more. You're wrong! You're wrong! <laughs> Earlier you switched over to Alicia's personality. Because you wanted to cause Alicia pain. The reason for that is clear. You are deeply envious of her. What are you? You brought yourself as much suffering as you possibly could. But nonetheless, you hated Alicia for finding companions in Kimi and me. You hated her and envied her. <gasps> You're wrong! You're wrong! You're wrong! Wrong! I'm not wrong. You only wanted to be loved. You wanted companionship. Shut up! Kill each other. Siesta, you're not going to die. Sidekick, you're not gonna die either. <laughs> trust each other more than we trust ourselves. That's really all there is to it. What is this nonsense? Something as simple as that can nullify my power? Isn't that a bit too convenient? Hey, a spiritual bond isn't nonsense. Did you say spiritual bonds? This is all wrong! Hell, you don't need to conform to some sacred writ. You don't need to kill anyone else either. You can have companionship without doing those things. Spiritual bonds come into being. My advice, stop trying to force yourself to obey whatever Seed tells you to. So you say? I won't lose. I will admit, I wanted to be loved and needed. I wanted someone to acknowledge that my being born actually meant something. That said, it couldn't have been just anybody. I live, fight, and lay ruin to the world for father's sake alone. That is what drives me. That instinct. And I survive. Now. Good for you. Shall we bring the sob story to its end now? I'd be more than happy to. Ah! <laughs> Great, what is happening now? It was 
supposed to remain confined to the lab. Perhaps the scent of food lured it out. Siesta! If you don't mind, I'd prefer you stay still a moment. I've lost a little too much blood. <laughs> This heart is no good. I need a new one. No, don't! If you want a new heart, I'll gladly give you mine. Don't take hers, I beg you! Please, just leave her alone! I told you before, didn't I? Eventually, you'd become my partner. Calm down. You have to stay alive and well. Now. <laughs> I'll take the legendary detective's heart for myself. <sighs> That's it. I finally have a heart worthy of this body. With this, father will know. Give it back. That heart belongs to Siesta and no one else. You give it back now! But that's an impossible proposition. This fine heart, it belongs to me. Don't you touch her! Keep your filthy hands off! Your fist is powerless against me. <laughs> what is the source of this well of rage? Where did it come from? The spiritual bond that the two of you shared. What were you to her in this life? Hell's asking was immaterial. I'd been thinking about it all along. What on earth was I to Siesta? What did I mean to her? How did she feel about me? And now, at this point, I'll never know the answer. <laughs> Nevertheless, from the first day we met, 35,000 feet up in the air. We traveled together for the best three years of my life, though they were anything but tranquil. And my life was in jeopardy countless times. She denounced me as stupid, put me in absurd situations. And yet, in the midst of those thousand absurdities, I laughed 10,000 times. Siesta and I both did, together. You ask what the relationship was between Siesta and me? You dare ask me to tell you what I felt about her? I could have told you that from the beginning. She was everything to me, more important to me than anything in the entire world! <laughs> Yeah. 
Suzuka had given me a whole new life. I had taken on the role of a legendary detective. But I wasn't solving ordinary crimes. I was fighting against android criminals. The very first night after I made the choice to change my whole identity to become a legendary detective, I had a fascinating dream. It was about my predecessor, the true legendary detective who had solved crimes and fought criminals all over the world. She was very different than me. I'd go so far as to say that Siesta and I had opposite personalities. She, the intelligent one, and I, the intuitive one, had a dramatic argument in the dream. It was an unsightly scene, a cliché melodrama. Ultimately, I won the argument, though. No, that's not true. It's more accurate to say Siesta was the bigger person and ceded the fight to me. She's more mature that way. So, in the end, Siesta said she would leave the responsibility for Kimizuka to me. Thus, I inherited the title of Legendary Detective and all that came with it. I was someone, at last. Or, to look at it a different way, to fail at this job would be unacceptable. No one likes a nobody. And I never want to go back to that place. It was a cage. That darkness was... too much. One week after Saikawa's live stadium show, school let out for summer vacation. It was the perfect chance to follow through on promises I'd made to Natsunagi and Saikawa. I figured we would just go to a local beach or something, but nope, not so much. We're off! Officially on course for the Aegean Seas! Hip, hip, hooray! You're always so over the top! Saikawa, when we said let's check out the ocean together, I was thinking more beach day and less eight-day ocean voyage. Well, we've left port, so you might as well stop complaining. Get into vacation mode! She's absolutely right. Nobody likes a party pooper, especially on vacation. This is my first ocean voyage, too, and I'm so looking forward to the experience. Thanks a lot, Yui. It's really not a big deal. It's the least I can do to repay you for your help. Another way would be fighting alongside us against Spess. If you do that, then we can call it even. Of course, happy to help. You know I'll do anything within my power. Well, hopefully we won't really need it, but just in case. Kimizuka? Huh? Shar? It's been, what, a year? About that. Since that sad day. Kimizuka, who's this pretty girl? Shar, she used to be my, our associate back in the day. To be honest, I never expected to see you again. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised myself. Have you been doing well? If I had to venture a guess, I'd say you being on board this ship is just a coincidence. Why? Is there something going on here? Seriously? What in the world have you been doing all this time? What do you mean? What have you been doing since Mom died? Kimizuka, I thought that your intention was to pick up right where she left off in her work. You mean her dying wish? I've taken on that task. Who are you? I am the legendary detective, Nagisa Natsunagi. Natsunagi, you say? Oh, you're the one who... Could you go play cops and robbers somewhere else? I don't have time for all of your childish games. You're making a mockery of her. I'm not playing any games! <gasps> don't you think there has to be a reason she gave me a second chance at life in this way? She entrusted her heart to me to fulfill a purpose. I meant it when I said I took on her dying wish. I swear by the heart in my chest. Fine then. You may do whatever you want. Know this. I'm the one who's taken on her dying wish. Sorry, it's my fault. If I hadn't invited you two on this cruise, you wouldn't have gotten swept up into this drama. There's no need to apologize, Saikawa. I'm the one who should say sorry. I got Natsunagi tangled. Are you okay? <laughs> How 
about a dip in the pool to lighten the mood? Eh, Saikawa? Right, and there's even a water slide, Nagisa. Come on, he'll love it. Let's go get those suits on, lady. Hold on, Yui, stop! Now then. How? Why? That makes it 17 losses in a row for me now. This joint is definitely run by the mob. One more hand. One more hand, please! Don't you know when to call it quits? What the hell? Only gambling addicts keep gambling until they're in tears. What do you want? I assume you were looking for me for a reason, right? Yeah. Earlier. You implied that there was something happening on the ship? Mom's bequest. Her bequest? Yes. Shortly before she passed away, Mom left behind bequests that would help us defeat Spess globally. And one of those objects can supposedly be found on this ship. It took time to figure it out, but my intel is correct. A bequest from Siesta is on this ship. So how's the casino connected? Mm. Oh, uh, I thought something worthy of being a bequest from Mom would most likely be in the casino. A special jackpot or something. I figured if I want it big, maybe... Oh. Wow, you really are a proper idiot, huh? What? How dare you? Well, since you have no desire to help take on Mom's dying wishes, none of this has much to do with you anyway. Sorry to worry you. It wasn't my intention. So, why didn't you become a detective? I was for sure you'd take up that mantle. Something she... Siesta said to me on that day, four years ago. Be my sidekick for this case, will you? So I wouldn't feel right being a detective. For the foreseeable future, I'll remain what I was. The legendary detective's sidekick. I'll still be that. For her. You're a fool. You're the one living in the past for Mom. I'm honoring her by moving forward. Oh well, it's fine. I'll handle things in my own way. I don't really need your help. But you're free to find Mom's bequest. And your own answers? You can do it in your own way. <laughs> I guess it's good that they're cutting loose while they still can. After all that, I didn't come across any leads. Something's weird here. What do you mean, weird? Sitting face to face with you like this and eating a nice, fancy dinner. What else can we do? Saikawa said she's making the rounds as a guest of honor. So you think I'm boring? Will you please stop putting words in my mouth? Kimizuka, when we were at the pool today, you didn't join us. What did you do? Nothing much. After I went and bought a sexy new swimsuit. What was that? Nothing. Natsunagi, what are you doing after? Huh? I don't know. What's up? Well, um, there's a little something that I wanted to discuss with you. What is it? Is there some reason we can't just talk about it now? Yeah, it's something that'd be a bit awkward to discuss here. But the bar across the way should be fine. You want to meet there in an hour or so and talk about it? You mean, just you and me? The two of us, alone in a bar? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay then, I guess that's fine. Take a shower, and I realized I literally had nothing else to wear except for this. <laughs> so, what did you want to discuss? 
That was not the discussion I expected. I figured he would... I feel ridiculous. It must have been the influence on my heart's former owner. What are you muttering under your breath over there? Uh... Huh? What's that? Why are you flipping out now? I'm not flipping out. You are flipping out. I said I'm not flipping out! This is flipping uh, out! Uh, you're a child. But anyway, she's not as bad of a person as I thought, that Char girl. She's a pure and simple fool, which might be the best thing about her now that I think about it. Hmm. I knew it all along, you know. That between you and me, I was the stronger one. I didn't even know Siesta like you. I just have her heart. And I still got it in my head that I should fulfill her dying wish. That's what I don't understand. Why did you decide to take up her mantle? Because... From a young age, my body was a total wreck. That sick room was like my birdcage, and I was convinced that I would spend my entire life in there. How could my existence ever mean anything at all if I never left that room? That terrified me. Haunted me. But then, by some miracle, I was given another chance. A chance to fly free. To truly live. And yet... I didn't know how to... You know, fly away. How to fly? And so I decided I would just cheat a little. I would live her life. The girl who'd given me my freedom. That's what I thought. It's all so sad. Natsunaki didn't know how to live her own life. So she decided to live siestas instead. Honestly, I did the same. Well then, I guess I'm gonna head up to bed now. Saikawa. No, not in the lounge or anywhere else. However, we did find this. Uh, Himizuka, this is. At 8 p.m., bring the legendary detective's bequest and come to the main deck. Do you think Spes could be behind this? If it's the legendary detective's bequest they're after, then that's sufficient circumstantial evidence. But unfortunately, we don't know what the bequest is, so we don't know what we're looking for. And in that case... Let's just focus on finding Natsunagi and forget about Siesta's bequest for now. too, so there shouldn't be anything I'm overlooking. Right. Well, this sucks. Give me your hand. <gasps> Roll your shoulders back. And breathe in rhythm. Close your eyes. Inhale deeply. And let it out. Open your eyes and your field of vision, which was clouded, will now be clear. So, what is all that? It's kind of an incantation, something to calm my heart when it feels like it might burst, like before a live performance. <laughs> I'm sorry for worrying you. I'm pretty pathetic. You're not pathetic, not even a little. 
You don't think so? I lost my cool, though. <laughs> That's a ridiculous thing to say. It presupposes that I ever thought you were cool in the first place, Kimizuka, and I did not. All right, Saikawa. Stone Cold just throwing disses like nothing, huh? Oh, come on. I wasn't trying to be mean. We have more in common than you think, you know. In what way? I used to be just like you, Kimizuka. I was one of those people who can't live life alone. But when my parents died, I lost sight of any reference points for living. I obsessed about all the broken promises. And as a result of all that, I attempted to commit an act that could never be undone. Saikawa. Then two people came along and saved me. One of them was you, Kimizuka, and I could just tell that you were in the same boat that I was. And the other one was Nagisa. The two of you caring enough to try and save me gave me the courage to keep going. Which is why I was able to take the hand you offered me without hesitation. That makes sense? gave me the best gift, so I don't expect you to do anything over and above that. That said, my request is that you don't worry about me any more than is necessary, do you understand? That's the kind of partners you and I will be to each other, and that's all right. Makes sense. Works for me. It keeps it simple. If you call yourself the legendary detective sidekick, then that would make me like the sidekick to the sidekick, wouldn't it? So you want to be a sidekick sidekick? Yeah, exactly right. Hey, this arrangement reminds me of those Russian nesting dolls. I don't know if I could ever really become your true right hand, but I do think I could be something like your left eye. Okay, that would be ideal. After all that, we still haven't even found a single clue. But Kimizuka... That said, what we did find is that we weren't able to find anything. Mm-hmm. If our enemy can't be found even when you're using your left eye. You having a eureka moment? Yeah. From here on out, we aren't going to bother with deduction or tactics. I'm done with games. This is war. I've had about enough of the cat and mouse. Come on out, Chameleon! Show yourself! And return Natsunagi! You were smart to know I was here. <laughs> Natsunagi! Please! I would appreciate it if you'd hold still for me. <laughs> Just what is it that you're after? I believe you know exactly what it is I'm after. Yeah, well, we'd be thrilled to hand over that infamous bequest, but unfortunately for all of us, we don't know a thing about it. Why don't you just be civil and let her go? This is becoming a bit of a problem. <laughs> I honestly expected you to be better at bargaining. <laughs> Stop this, chameleon! make a deal. Will you save this girl's life? Or will it be the lives of the passengers they're now desperately trying to evacuate? You shall have the honor of making this impossible choice. So tell me, what is the point in doing that? Oh, just the frosting on the proverbial cake. What's the cake then? Well, if the legendary detective's bequest can't be found, then this entire ship will sink. But why Natsunagi? Why kill her? What would you creeps gain by doing that? The answer is actually remarkably simple. You see, this girl's body has been imbued with the legendary detective's blood. Now, it's time for you to choose. Will you save this damsel's life? Or everyone else's? Kimizuka... I want you to shoot me. What are you talking about? Don't be absurd. It's an easy choice. 
One life taken to save the many. Shoot me and save all the passengers. That kind of dispassionate thinking? It's unlike you. Is it? Maybe so. But still, this situation calls for a legendary detective's cool, calculated reasoning. Not my passionate emotions. But you're the legendary detective. No, I'm not. I'm not anything at all. <sighs> Kimizuka, when you said I didn't need to replace anyone, I deeply appreciated that. You have no idea. Thank you so much. Keep your calculated reasoning. You say you're not anything at all? Well, if you're not anything at all, you should be free to become anything you want. If you don't know how to fly, someone who does can teach you to spread your wings. If you don't know how to live your life, you can follow in someone else's footsteps. Enough talk. Have you arrived at a decision? Yeah. I made my decision a long time ago. Because <laughs> we have an arrangement. Nagisa Natsunagi can't die before I do. Keep your calculated reasoning. Huh? You say you're not anything at all? Well, if you're not anything at all, you should be free to become anything you want. If you don't know how to fly, someone who does can teach you to spread your wings. If you don't know how to live your life, you can follow in someone else's footsteps. <sighs> Enough talk. Have you arrived at a decision? Yeah, I made my decision a long time ago. Because we have an arrangement. Nagisa Natsunagi can't die before I do. I'm sorry, but that's what was promised. Saikawa, that twinkle of blue that shines even in the dark. Definitely worth three billion yen, if you ask me. Yeah. Quite well played. I will give you that much. But I'm finished going easy on you. Trust me when I say, I shall give you the death you so richly deserve. <laughs> this moment that I said to Siesta, you don't seem like a detective. If you ask me, you're more like a secret agent or something. I see. Well, while you may not think I seem like a detective, perhaps our definitions of the word just differ a bit. I believe a detective is one who protects their client's interests at all times. I take great pride in doing this sort of work. It's an honorable profession, and that's why I've always done it, and will continue to do so in the future. saying that, Siesta stood firm in her identity as a detective, not a secret agent. And I think that what Siesta meant by client was actually every human being other than herself. For that reason, she referred to herself as a legendary detective by nature. And then she left. Her smile was beyond radiant. To be honest, from here on out, I'm just winging it. It was a close call, but we managed to save Natsunaki. The fact that Saikawa raced over here when she did tells me that the evacuation of all the other passengers should be complete by now. If I'm the only one who goes down with the ship, then that's just fine by me. 
I like that resolute look in your eye. Planning to die alone tonight, are we? No thanks. You'll be joining me, whether you like it or not. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't intend to simply hand my life over to you this evening. After I've killed you, I'll kill those girls as well. Not just to spite you, I do have a purpose in mind. I'm sure you'll be happy to hear. I don't plan on making it quick either. Why don't you plan on making it quick? Well, you see, I know they possess the eye of Sapphire and that heart. From the tips of their toes to every single hair on their heads, it's worth examining them meticulously, don't you think? I'll relish tormenting them, and by the time I am done, they will both be begging me to let them die. But only at the very, very end will I grant them that mercy. <laughs> right then, I think that's enough talk for one evening. Have you made your reservations for your impending trip to hell? I'm sorry. Unfortunately for you, that destination doesn't appear on my itinerary. There must be some mistake then. Let's go anyway. <laughs> You first! <laughs> you overestimate yourself! <laughs> You're just an ordinary human. Did you really think that you could defeat us? You could never protect anyone. Well, you talk too much. You will die here tonight, and I will kill those girls you helped escape. I will end them without fail with this very hand! Damn you! Shut up! Just accept that all your efforts have been in vain. You and all the humans you fought so hard to protect will perish. Just like that loathsome, pathetic, legendary detective. I'm going to die. That's fine. But not them. Not Sanagi. And Saikawa. I have to protect the two of them. I must defend my clients' lives. Just like Char said, I'm no more than a sidekick. And yet... I intend to uphold the legacy of the legendary detective's dying wish! Start. Oh, 
Oh, right. I get it. Hey, Foopy, it's way past time someone dropped that filthy habit. Fine, then. No way around it. Imagine that. You broke through the mind control and landed a good punch. You said she was the most important thing in the world to you. How touching. Romantic. And while I am moved by this profession of your love, I'm confused as to why you'd attempt to punch your one and only in the face. you cry. That's so adorable. Fiesta, is it? Is it really you? No. I won't allow this. I won't permit such absurdity. You willfully taking over my body. You can't! Be quiet. I'm speaking with Kimi now, so please don't interrupt. Sidekick. There's not much time, so listen carefully. The truth is, my heart is of slightly exceptional make. I pondered over various schemes, but couldn't come up with any other way besides this. If I just had to kill her, I've no doubt I could have done that easily. But she wanted more. Alicia wanted to really live, to be a normal girl, and to go to school. Therefore, I have infiltrated Hell's body and consciousness, suppressed her will and her thoughts. That was the only path. It was the only way that I could save Alicia. And that means... But doesn't that mean... Yes, because protecting a client's interests is a detective's main job. <sighs> Siesta! So from the beginning, you... I've told you, to be a real detective, you have to get a handle on a case before the incident even occurs. For some time now, I've known that it would come down to this. Siesta, how could you? You can't do that. 
You can't just decide something like this on your own. I had to. You would have stopped me if I told you. I have a favor to ask of you. I refuse. Hear me out. The answer's no. How stupid are you, Kimi? This is not the time for you to be obstinate. If I'm able to successfully suppress Hell's fiendish intentions, then there's a strong possibility that Alicia's consciousness will awaken again in this body. Alicia will... She may lose her memory, but even if she doesn't remember who you are, you will have to try and get her to cooperate. And then together, I want you to bring down Spess. No way! Because that would mean your consciousness would get snuffed out along with Hell's. I would never allow that to happen. That is not a viable option. I don't care what form you take, even if you're an enemy. As long as you, your essence, and your consciousness get to stay alive somehow. I figured you'd say something like that. It's gonna be okay, Kimi. Alicia has qualities that I just don't have and never will. With her by your side, everything will go just great for you. No! Stop trying to force your will on me, okay? You're not listening to me. I wonder if this is a bit of synchronicity. Pollen. So that's it. That culture festival, the Hanukkah-san incident, that drug that ran rampant through my middle school. It makes sense. The drug was derived from a flower that blooms on this thing's body. Memory impairment has also been reported to occur as a known side effect of the drug. No, please. I... I don't want to forget... anything. It'll be all right. Well, I mean, if I'm actually being honest here, it is possible you may forget a few little things. All that said, you won't ever forget me, Kimi. Because you won't cast aside our mission. You and Alicia will keep doing the work for me. With her saying, this is so absurd the whole time. This can't be. Stop this. I refuse. I'm your sidekick and yours alone. I won't fight next to anyone else but you, Siesta. Oh, Kimi. You've always known exactly what to say to me. <laughs> I don't want to forget you. Or all we did. I won't. Not ever. It's going to be alright. It's like we said, we survived it all by trusting each other more than either of us could ever trust ourselves. You're saying I should trust your plan again now, just like I always have? Yes, exactly. In all the time that we've known each other, have I ever been wrong? No, you haven't. Not even once. You've always been right every single time. And it's super annoying, you know? you were this time. <laughs> I wanted you to be wrong. I hate to say it, but the next time you wake up, I think I might already be gone, but... <gasps> Kimi, I promise that I'll never forget you. Even if my consciousness is stripped away in the end, your memory is the one thing that will remain. It may take time. I can't say exactly how or when. It might be a week, a month, or even a year. Who knows, it may take even longer than that. Nevertheless, someday soon, I will find my way to you. For one last goodbye. <laughs> Without fail. I promise. That's what Siesta wanted. For Alicia and me to take down Spess together. That was her final dying wish. And also... A ribbon sounds nice. I sure would love to wear one. And try to enroll 
other real school. Wait, so Natsunagi is... to siesta. I will fight! Kimi, you're so dumb. Hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand combat against a monster? Rashness isn't even strong enough. Insanity about covers it. Right then, I think that should do it. Now you will never be able to attack me again. Hmm. Been a while, huh, stranger? Yeah. That was your nap. You feel rested? So dumb, aren't you? I thought you'd cry for me, sidekick. In fact, I was certain of it. That's why I wanted to have said my goodbyes on that boat. But you just... You like me too, don't you, Kimi? Too much. I am sorry. I ran you around so hard. I wish I could have had more chances to hear you say, this is so absurd, and see that look on your face in profile. I wanted to hear you laugh many, many more times. I didn't want to die. you that time, that whatever incidents or problems you got tangled up in with your trouble magnet nature, I would protect you. So stay like you are, peacefully sleeping, with your mind at ease. And when you wake up, try not to be sad, even though I'll be gone by then. But it's okay. I have no doubt she'll protect you, maybe even better than me. Also, I know she'll take you in her arms, like I should have that one time. In the end, I guess I never gave this to her, did I? I need to think of a name. A new name for this body. In its rebirth after I've suppressed Hell's consciousness. So, sidekick, please remember this the name of the person who will someday awaken you from your slumber is. It's been a year since I last saw you. You've got a meaner look in your eye these days. Yeah, you're the one who's completely changed yourself, from your looks on down to the rest of you. So you were still in there at heart? No, not really. I'm just borrowing your body for a little while. I would never even dream of stealing it for myself. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to see you. I've missed you. That's enough talk for now. We 
we need to take care of that thing first. Yes. Right. That is why I'm here. Well? Hey there. Be my sidekick one last time. Yeah. You're the legendary detective. <laughs> what you say goes. Here. Here we go. longer attack me, so I'd say it'd be advantageous for me to be in front of it and for you to cover the rear. I'd forgotten about that. I'm surprised your lack of focus hasn't gotten better. <laughs> Come to think of it, you haven't changed. You'd say I'm getting us a room in a resort hotel tonight, and then you'd march right into the casino. See to blow all our money. <laughs> that one was your fault. You said you've had it with pooping outdoors and got all weepy. A big time jackpot was our only hope. <laughs> Will you stop making up fake memories? It's childish. If this is about the time I wounded your pride when I happened to find you doing your business behind a dumpster, then I apologize. We're in combat, you know. Stop dredging up the distant past. <laughs> that, you've embarrassed yourself a time or two, been exposed in an awkward light. No, that's never happened. Don't be coy. You know, when we got into bed together that one time, and you... Huh? What? La la la. Then why are you pointing your gun at me with such menace? <laughs> hey, have you forgotten we're in the middle of combat? Can you stop dredging up the distant past? I am positive I've heard that line somewhere before. This is all so absurd. <laughs> so? At the end of the day, how did it turn out? Sorry? What we were just talking about. That night we shared a bed. Did we do... it? I thought we agreed we shouldn't go dredging up the distant past. Look, honestly, my preoccupation with that question has kept me from moving on from this world. Wow, way to take the joy out of being reunited. Okay, then. What did you really come back to do? time too, just like this. <clears throat> no, it wasn't just that time. All the time, everywhere we went, you always did.
I will admit, at the end of the day, you pulling me around was always just what I needed. What has gotten into you lately, sidekick? Lonely without me? Could I really have been that spineless? Sorry. Don't apologize. I'm sorry I died before you. I said don't apologize. The truth is, I wasn't planning on traveling with you for years on end. But before I knew it, three years had gone by. My guess is, I found that I was fonder of you than I ever imagined I would be. Of course you were. But it's not like you and I were lovers. When you get down to it, we weren't even friends. Detective and sidekick, that's all we were. Bizarre business partners. I realized that. You didn't think of me in a romantic way. It was never really about that. And I didn't really give you any sort of special treatment either. And yet, those three short years, the dizzying times you and I had together, they were the best of my life. My favorite memories ever. <laughs> You're so dumb, aren't you? <laughs> Why would you try to act tough with a dead girl? It looks to me. You held up just fine on your own. Was I lonely without you? Uh Honestly. I was surrounded by such lively people that I barely had any time to think about it. So it's okay. I'm not lonely. I'm so glad. You should nurture those friendships. Hey, Siesta. What? Well, about our conversation from earlier. You know, about that time when we got into bed together. I want you to know nothing happened that night, and I really regret that. Oh, I see. To tell the truth... <laughs> if it was you, I wouldn't have minded if we did something, even if just one time. See, that would have been good to know. We can't go back, but I wish you'd said. shown up exactly when she did, we'd be fish food now. I see. So she swooped in and saved us one last time, huh? In hindsight, I think she knew. That day, I feel like she had a premonition that she was going to die, you know? Agreed. Seems likely. But even if hypothetically she had known... I wish she... were still alive. Did she give you any special orders? To nurture our friendships, that's all. Interesting. When we get back, can you and I go to a florist together? A florist? I need your help picking out the right flowers to bring to Mom's gravestone. Uh. Are you sure that's what you want? Yeah, it'll do. But it just looks so plain and ordinary. We both know you're already the boy next door type as it is. So if you go wearing ordinary clothing on top of that, you'll vanish right into the scenery. Not very likely. I am envisioning it as we speak. A future where you're just an extra in the background. Hey. <laughs> you're the worst. I guess... You were watching me the whole time with that left eye. You were a huge help, Saikawa. I only did what was common sense. Because after all, I'm a sidekick sidekick.
more importantly, is it okay that you're here with me? There's a party, right? To show appreciation for you? Yeah, although I told them that they didn't have to go to such lengths. Well, I mean, they do owe you their lives. Thanks to you, they're all headed home, safe and sound. That warrants a party. <laughs> Yikes, I gotta run. I have to go rehearse. Rehearse what? I'm doing a live performance during the party. After all the drama, I thought it would be nice to leave people with a fun memory instead of a scary one, you know? Also, when I sense people are feeling down, I guess I want to make them smile again. You know what that means. New worshippers! The... I meant to say fans. Sure you did. Here I go! It's time to unleash my adorableness! Cause I'm the cutest idol in the whole world! <laughs> Booby. Hmm. Hi. So what'd you say to her? I don't think I can talk to Natsunaki about it just yet. That makes sense. Well, I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually. Been waiting long? You didn't have to change for me. <sighs> Can't seem to coordinate outfits, can we? What's with the fancy jacket? It doesn't suit you. I know, Saikawa bought it for me. Ugh, you shouldn't tell people that. It's a turnoff. Don't treat me like an object. Uh, hello, how are you? So, Matsunaga. What is it? What happens when we get back? Are we done, or will we keep working? The truth is, this case has really bruised my confidence. I wasn't able to play an active role in solving it. I became a victim, and that feels bad. You and Yui had to step in and save me. And to make matters even worse, I had to rely on her help. I just don't... Qualified. Siesta told me herself, you know. Hmm? That you lent her your body of your own volition so we would succeed. Huh? Are you actually asking me to inhabit your body? Yeah. That's my condition in exchange for hearing your last wishes. Well, are you sure you're going to be okay with that? Your body belongs to you even though you have my heart. I know you're right. My hands, my legs, everything from the ends of my hair down to my toes, it all belongs to me. And yet, my heart's not just mine. Which is why I want you to override my consciousness and save Kimizuka from the enemy he's fighting as we speak. I am already dead, you know. It's not my place to get involved with him anymore. Anyway... It might be upsetting for Sidekick, if I were to show up again after all this time. Could be, but I guess that's the risk you'd have to take if you want to save him. That's reckless. With stakes this high, fretting about people's feelings seems reckless to me. You and I are so different. We don't see eye to eye, do we? Well, why not? I just have to go to him? Can do. Hey. You gave me a real legendary detective. Thank you so much for that. And you've allowed me to live on, even in death. You're wrong, though. You're the legendary detective now, and you have my blessing. So make me proud. That conversation set the whole plan into motion, and it worked. You two saved my life. Natsunagi has gifts. 
Ones that she herself isn't even aware of. And in the days after we first met, she brought back emotions I wasn't even aware I had locked away. And more importantly, she made me remember the mission I was destined to fulfill. During the Sapphire case, Natsunagi was able to see what Saikawa truly desired, much more quickly than I did. She saved this case, too. With her powers of persuasion, she was able to move Siesta in a way I never could. Natsunagi has an intuitive gift. In any given moment, she knows just the words a person wants to hear or what needs to be done. It's a remarkable power, which is why... You're the ideal legendary detective. I mean, think about it. A real detective solves problems their clients might not even know they have. So manipulative. All right. Fine. I'll do it. But only because someone else asked me to. Someone else? Do you mean Siesta? Yep. That was the condition for her to step in and help me out just the one time. Nagisa Natsunagi. Yui Saikawa. Charlotte Arisaka Anderson, and Kimihiko Kimizuka. I want the four of you to bring down Spes together. You four carry my bequest. In death, I give you this task. That's my dying wish. Now I see. In that moment, I knew I'd already signed up for the job, but hearing that made it official. Still, my lack of confidence is a problem, and none of this changes that fact. Oh, relax. When it comes to lacking confidence, nobody has got the upper hand on me. That is the most pathetic one-upmanship I've ever heard. Another thing. You may have gotten it into your head that compared to you, Siesta was perfect and superhuman. But she had her flaws, too. Oh, did she really? Yeah, of course she did. She'd get carried away by the moment easily. At one point, for some reason, we wound up in bed together. Uh, uh Natsunagi? <sighs> hey, tonight, when we're all done here, come up to my room. Uh, what? Are you saying what I think you are? You're I. Are you? You can't be. I don't know. What do you think? Attention passengers, this is an urgent request. We cannot provide details at this time. However, if there is a detective on board, please report to the help desk at once. It's still too soon to call this an epilogue.